Hey y'all, welcome. Welcome back to uh, Artistic License, my Sunday stream. Where we do a little bit of whatever I want. Today, we're doing some more of our Valentine's Day game. We are playing Dream Daddies. Um, we did, let's see, what was his name? We did Joseph's Rue yesterday, which was not at all what I expected. Um, yeah, I, I, I wanted to be a homewrecker and the game said, no, we don't do that here. Um, I was very disappointed. So today, uh, we're trying to decide between doing Robert's route or Damien's route. So I'm going to get the game going. Because I don't know. I don't know which is good. So we've got Robert. He's our bad boy. And then we've got Damien, who is our goth king. And probably a vampire. Because I don't think I've ever played one of these, like, most of these games have a vampire in them. That's just how it is. Okay. Game is up. Make sure y'all can see. Yes, you can see. Okay. So, I think... I assume if we hit continue, it's going to, like, do a new game plus situation? Let's see. Yeah, this is all the auto saves from yesterday. Okay. So I guess not. I guess we click new game. I maybe I maybe I'll um maybe I'll cut all this. <laughs> maybe I'll cut all this with the when when I upload it to YouTube. Okay, let's try this again. Let's try this again. Okay. There is a fast forward. I saw it. Um I just wasn't I just am blind. Um so I didn't notice. Okay, here we go. We're going to do a new game. And hopefully it will do the thing where it pauses at the choices. So I guess, okay, wait, you can't, can't fast forward this. Um, we're going to pretend to be dead. I let my tongue roll out of my mouth and stop breathing. Amanda shakes me. Come on, Dad, this hasn't worked on me since I was six. I'm sorry, Amanda. This is the end for me. Dad, I swear to God. Amanda, I bequeath to you all of my earthly possessions. Spread my ashes over my recliner. Okay, well, your corpse better get into the moving van because it's leaving soon. <sighs> Okay, and then we're awake. Ugh. We're spooning the box. We're gonna go brush our teeth. Yes. And we're gonna make our dad. Build that dad. Okay. So it's this one. I kept that. I didn't change to another head. I think I kept the normal head. Definitely did this. Wait. Let me just. No, I did this one. I did this one. I did this one. Okay. And I know I did the anime eyes. This nose. And these brows. Okay. And I had an earring. And the suit. Okay. There we go. Name that dad. Karen Terry, okay. Be that dad. <laughs> okay, we're not gonna. Oh, there's the fast forward now. Oh, you hold it down. Okay, okay. So you hold it down to fast forward. So we're gonna go the way your father and I. And then we know that Willie really just changes mother to father. <laughs> Okay, here we go. Um, she pooped her pants during a sleepover. Ugh. Dad, that was me. I did that. Oh, oh. Uh, mm -hmm. I was ha and I was having a sleepover with Emma R, who isn't Emma P. She never told anyone though. True Blue, that Emma R. Huh. Anyway, I gotta show this to Emma R later. She'll get a kick out of it. Okay, and then this is we're back to <laughs> the stuff we've seen. Okay. Oh, so we get a different one since it's a since it's a dad. Okay, so we're gonna say this was the day we adopted you this time. It's kind of a funny story. The day we brought you home, we got into a car accident. It wasn't anything big, just a little fender bender in the parking lot. But of course I was freaking out, and the little old lady who crashed into us was freaking out, and I didn't know what to do. But your father, oh man. He, okay, so this is all the same. This is still all the same. Mm -hmm. ah. Ah. Okay. Um, yep, so we can fast forward all of this, because this isn't any different. Okay, 
So before we said washer and dryer hookups, let's say uh, multiple places to sleep. Not only are there bedrooms for your sleeping pleasure, but couches and floor space where you can, yes, catch a wink. What a deal. I mean, if sleep weren't for the week, you sleep more than anyone I know. I admit my faults, Pops. I keep it real. Anyway, it's also smaller than our last house. Okay, so then this is the same. Yeah. <laughs> when you fast forward and she's like, yeah. <laughs> yes, Amanda. Okay. Okay. All right, so we need to make a decision. We need to make a decision. Are we doing... Are we doing Damien or Robert? I think we're gonna. I think we're gonna do Damien. Yeah. Okay. Um. So before we said we need to unpack first, I think this time we're gonna say, um, I need to get some coffee ASAP. I think that skips the packing one, because for Damien, like, let's see. Yeah. Okay. 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 I see. This doesn't matter. I need to get my hands on a nice hot cup of the old bean juice or I'm gonna be useless all day. I think we passed a coffee shop on the way here. Maybe we can check that out. Let's do it. Okay, and I think this is gonna be the mat scene. We walk down the street to the coffee spoon. Yes, it is. Okay, so we have seen this scene. We can fast forward. Hey, 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 hey. Yep, yep, yep. And we're not romancing Matt. Okay. Um, we chose Ice Tegan and Sarah. Let's choose Chai Antward. So, oh, he likes that. Okay, spicy. I don't get it. <laughs> oh, it's a pun. Die Antward, a South African rap group. They're pretty well known for their uh, evocative imagery and hyper stylized music videos. Their music is as catchy as it is disturbing. Do. I'm doing the, tr the thing hey. again, but coming right up. Hmm. And for you? Okay, and she still gets hey. macchiato de Marco. Hey. And he's gonna ask us about the banana bread. Okay. So we did banana bread Kennedy's before. Let's do grateful banana bread. Mm. Oh! Wait, what does that mean? Did we piss him off? I haven't, I didn't see that at all last time. I only saw hearts and eggplants. I did not see black clouds. Okay. Like the jam rock band fronted by Jerry Garcia? Huh? That actually has a nice ring to it. Really? Hey. Yeah, grateful banana bread. Strong decisions. That's art, baby. Okay, that's still the same. Oh, hey. Okay, but he did not like that. I guess he's not into it. Okay, so now we can say... I should get back to unpacking. I need a nap. Let's do I need a nap. We just had coffee. Have you ever known me to play by the rules? Your father's a rebel, sweetie. Well, now all aboard the train to sleep at time junction. So I guess you can just do those scenes in any order and it doesn't really matter. And this is, okay, yeah, this is Craig. We're not romancing Craig this time so we can choose whatever. Oh wait, there was no choices for him. Oh, okay, I did not realize that. Okay, yep, this is all the same too. Come on, we gotta get to our vampire boy. Okay. Um, this is what I chose before, so we're gonna say, I'm secretly the mayor of this town. This is Animal Crossing now, you guys. We're gonna cross some animals. Amanda, this town needs me. I need to perform my mayoral duties. I must don my top hat and wear my monocle so that I may preside over my mayor stuff. Yeah. I think you're thinking of the guy from Monopoly. He was a mayor, right? Oh. He was not. <laughs> right. I'm just kidding. I'm actually going to... Okay. Um... Okay, so for Damien, we're not supposed to go to the game. So we are going to um, go to bed. I'm wiped. Have fun with Emma's. Well, I'll try to keep it down. Okay. Yeah, this is the same. Hmm. Oh. Oh, it's this guy. Okay, okay. Yeah, Joseph, I remember. Wow. Uh, uh, <laughs> get it, Shadow! Hello, Shadowsaurus. Oh my gosh. Wait, this is not... Was that always your Twitch name? This is a new Twitch name. How's it going? We're playing daddies. <sighs> we did Joseph's route last time. So we're doing... We're trying to do Damien's route this time. 
What? I'm hot on the trail. I'll get 12 hours of quality sleep if it's the last thing I do. As I shut the door behind me, Amanda's laugh echoes through the hallway. Oh wait, this is different. I... You changed it recently? Okay. Alright. I understand. Sometimes you got to change it. Well, I'm glad you're here. Damien's my favorite. Oh good, that's who we're doing. We're gonna do Damien. I wake up to a text from an unknown number. Oh, this is Craig. Yeah, we're not gonna do this. Um, we're gonna go back to sleep. Sorry, Craig. We're not about it. Um, how long was I out? What time is it? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, oh, this is the Amanda school scene. We also saw, we also saw oh, this. No. Oh, hmm. Ah, hmm. Wow. And we know that oh, kid now is Damien's son. Okay. Um, we said we just moved before. Let's do She's Fine. Oh, he did not... Okay. He did not like that. I did not realize there was, like, anything worse than a neutral choice in this game. Um, but apparently all of these have a, a positive, a negative, and a neutral choice or something like that. That's just how she is. I'm sure she'll pull out of it. Well, you're her dad. I suppose you know your daughter ah. better than anyone. See if you can talk to her about it. I know she values you a great deal. Okay. So really, know. that doesn't... So it didn't change anything. It didn't... My choice hey. didn't change anything. Mm. Yeah, I keep pissing them off. Oh, he was happy. I don't know why he was happy. Okay. Uh, yeah, this isn't any different. Okay, we're gonna go to the mall this time. So for Damien's route, we're supposed to go to the mall. Does that sound good to you? Mm. Yeah, sure. Why the mall? Geez, can a dad take his daughter to the mm. mall? Will you buy me things? I will buy you a thing. Singular. Sounds like a deal to me. We drive in silence for a short while. Amanda plays a game on her phone. I should say something. Um, oh, this is where they talk about school. Mm. We don't have to do this. Yeah, and she likes mm. Noah, but she won't admit it. It impacts your ending. They can friend zone you. What? But okay, but I did Joseph's and I saw the ending for that. And like I got all the good dates and all the good stuff. And like Joseph still didn't stay with me. He went back to Mary. I was so mad. I wanted to be a homewrecker. Hopefully Damien does not disappoint me. Okay, we arrive at the mall, a big indoor shopping center with a couple different floors. It's kind of dead, but that doesn't stop a mall security guard from yelling at the top at a group of loitering teens. He's broken. Joseph's broken. I agree. Why? Why he, would he do that? That's ridiculous. Let's eat something disgusting for dinner. He's always been broken. They never figured out how to fix him. Oh, weird. Hey. Hell yeah. Language, Missy. Huh? Heck yeah. Better. <laughs> we approach the food court and evaluate our options. There's greasy restaurant after greasy restaurant. My heart burns just looking at the menus. Nobody looks happy to be here. What are you in the mood for? Bread dipped in sugar, bread with cheese on it, or do you just want me to inject some fat directly into your bloodstream? Yeah, I'm, this is the um, this one on Steam, by the way, that's like the dad director's cut. So if that makes any difference to what I'm supposed to do. I extend my hand to her. Would you do me the honor of sharing some nachos? Ah. She takes my hand with huh. a grin. It would make me the happiest, cheesiest girl alive. We order a giant pile of chips and a naturally orange cheese from a very unenthusiastic and possibly stoned teenager. We take a seat at a rickety table and dig in. Whoa. These are bad. These are very bad, but also strangely delicious. Mm -hmm. We have to eat through the pain. We enjoy the fluorescent cheesy goodness together until we're all out of nachos. So, something's been bothering me for a while. Can you explain memes to me? Oh boy. Oh, oh, oh Amanda. Oh, oh Amanda. <sighs> Which meme? All, all, all memes. Aww. Amanda sighs deeply and places her head in her <sighs> hands. Dad, it's complicated. See, memes are inside jokes shared by a bunch of people that get less funny the more people do it. So the problem is that the time a meme gets to you, Dad, all the youths have already done the joke to Dad. Dad. And what's worse is that that is the movies and TV and video games will try to jump in on the meme train, but just based on how long it takes to make them, the meme will be long dead by the time it comes out. So it just dates it and it isn't funny. Oh shit, what up? Ugh. Dad, please. <laughs> anyway, changing the subject. 
Where to now? Want to go to the goth store? Mm. What? You know, the one that's all black and tries to establish itself as anti-establishment, despite being an exact representation of the establishment. <laughs> I think he means Hot Topic. <laughs> I don't know what story you're talking about. You know, the one where you can buy the chain wallets and it's basically an assault on what people fought so hard against in the punk and hardcore movements of the 70s hmm. and 80s. Dude, you gotta be more specific. The one you threw up in that one time. Ah. Oh, that one. Hey. Yeah, the hot topic. Oh, look, it's a hot topic. Wow, it really literally looks like a hot topic. <gasps> Where's my fandom t-shirts? Amanda runs into the store with me trailing behind her. She makes a beeline hey. for the back. There it is. You can still see the outline, kind of. I'm so proud. Speech, Amanda. Yeah. Speech, speech, speech. <laughs> All right, I'll do it if you stop chanting. Huh. Amanda stops immediately. I clear my throat. Thank you all for joining us here today to commemorate an historic moment that would forever shape history. On a day very much like today, some five years ago, our very own Amanda Ann Terry had too much blue raspberry slushy on an outing huh. to the mall. After begging her father to take her to dead goth and beyond to buy rainbow suspenders, she proceeded to throw up all over the display of the My Chemical Romance merchandise. Her loving father then had to pay for said merchandise, which to this day remains among our possessions. Thank you. Amanda is moved. She begins clapping, slow at first, then faster and more vigorously. Several other patrons turn their heads. One of them also starts clapping. I bow my head. Yeah. Wow, a literal everyone clapped moment. Oh my gosh. Oh, hey, chain wallets. While Amanda busies herself looking at the band t-shirts, I try to find something of interest to myself. Not much for a dad to look in, look at in dead goth and beyond. Okay, um, we are going to... Dead Gotham Beyond is such a better name. Yeah, it is a better name than Hot Topic. I love that Fake Hot, to fake hot Topic um, copies the name of Bed Bath & Beyond uh, since that is probably like the height of commercialism and sanity. I love Bed Bath & Beyond, by the way. This is not a diss, this is just true. Okay, we're gonna peruse the band t-shirts. I barely know any of these bands. Cannibal Bone Party doesn't seem like music I'd enjoy, but they must be pretty happy that retail outlets are carrying their merchandise. I hope their parents are all really proud of them. Look, this is very important to me. I overhear the stifled argument over the cash register. An older gentleman is carrying a garment and showing it to a bored looking cashier with pink hair. Oh, okay. I can see that. Don't know what to tell you, dude. I just work. I Listen, when I brought this online, the website said this blouse was Victorian inspired. However, when I received it, it clearly held the trademark of Edwardian dressage. Do you want a coupon? I can give you a coupon. Will you leave if I give you a coupon? Is there a manager present? People have to know what they're buying. I am the manager. I see. Well, it would seem that I have outstayed my welcome. Good day, shopkeep. Your superiors will receive a strongly worded letter by post. Whatever, dude. The man whirls around and storms out, his literal coattails trailing behind him. I can't tell if they are Victorian-inspired or Edwardian in nature. Amanda trots up to me with a t-shirt in her hand. Oh boy, here uh. it comes. Hey, Dadron 5000. Yes, I'll buy it for uh. you. Wow, that was easy. Thanks. At least it's only one this time. Amanda plops the shirt onto the counter and grins at the cashier. I love your hair. Oh. The cashier says nothing and rings Amanda up, radiating hatred. I hand her a 20. So what was that guy's deal? The cashier rolls her eyes so hard I'm worried she'll pull something. That's Damien. He's in here all the time. He's obsessed with Victorian fashion or whatever. She hands Amanda her bag and it's clear the conversation is over. We make our way out of the store and head home to get some rest. Amanda and I sit on the couch trying to find something to watch over bowls of ice cream. Okay, this is what we, we've seen this part. Hmm. They watch the, the ghost trucker show. All right, now we're awake again. Um, okay. Oh, we're putting together furniture. Yes. Okay. Um, we said if there's food, I'm excited. We're going to say excited to beef up my grilling skills. I see this as a learning opportunity. If I can snake some hot grill tips, I think we can consider it a huh? success. Don't you want to meet some of the people in the neighborhood? I'll probably end up standing uncomfortably in the corner with a plate of food and hope that nobody mm. talks to me. Okay. That's, uh, we've seen this. Mm. 
Okay. I guess we're not as early as we thought we were. Joseph's backyard is already packed. Yes, he's already packed. Okay. <laughs> okay, we've seen this. Right. Yeah, and we brought the veggies and all of his weird oh, um, Chris ah. Christ kids. Ah. And Mary <laughs> and Brian. Okay. Um, how about I'm happy there? Got no worries about its size as long as me and my daughter are happy. Mm, well put. Oh, let me introduce you to my daughter. The kid peeks out from behind right. Brian. Okay, because we didn't go to the park. We didn't go to the park, so this is when we're first meeting them. Fifth grade. Okay, trying to skip through sixth grade, but not to brag. She's pretty smart. We already know this. Yeah, he's a braggart. He can't stop talking about how awesome Amanda is. We, and then we got into the Pokemon battle. Oh, and here's Robert. Yes, I remember you. Um, yes, yes, yes. Okay. So for Damien, I guess we should talk to Joseph and Damien again, right? Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, we're supposed to talk to Joseph and Damien. Okay. I spot Joseph chatting with the guy from Dead Goth and Beyond by the grill. I wonder what they're talking about. I walk mm. over to them. I'm so curious. Can you walk me through why you had your house painted black? Huh. Where do I even start? The house stays warmer in the winter. It provides an artistic contrast to the rest of the neighborhood, and it complements the crimson interior oh. perfectly. It's definitely an interesting choice. Oh. Thank you. I'm very proud of my abode. Karen, I was just having a conversation with Damien here about his aesthetic design decisions. Damien regards me up and down with a warm but critical mm. eye. How do you do? I don't believe I've had the pleasure. Damien is me if I was a dude. Oh my god, yes. <laughs> yes, oh my god. Like, wait, but you could so rock this. Look, like for real. Um, yes, I think I think you could. I think I saw you in Dead Gotham Beyond the other day. Damien's face turns bright red. I must apologize for my behavior on that day. You see, I take the goth lifestyle very seriously, and to be caught in a ruse by such a corporation as Dead Goth and Beyond was profoundly frustrating indeed. I hope you know that while my anger may have been justified, it was no such way for a gentleman to act. It's okay, man. Do tell me about yourself. Are you new to the area? Yes, my daughter and I just moved the other day. She's the one I took to Dead Goth and Beyond. Uh -huh. Very good taste on her part. Does she partake in the goth lifestyle? I think for a second. I look over to Amanda, who's hanging out with some of the older kids in the what? neighborhood. Hey, Amanda, would you consider yourself a goth? Amanda yells back. I wouldn't necessarily try to fall under any one specific label, but I guess if I had to choose, I would more describe myself as a twee hipster with some normal core leanings. Wow. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> Why do I vibe with Amanda though? <sighs> Bats are cool though. <laughs> That's true. Mm. Oh, pity. Mm. Are you enjoying the party so far? Oh, definitely. Thanks so much for putting this on. It's nice to be in a cul-de-sac where everyone's friendly and welcoming. Oh. Amanda walks up to yeah. the conversation. I also like Lost Boys a lot. Really good movie. Does that count as goth? <laughs> That it would, my dear. I don't believe we've had the pleasure of meeting Damien Blood March at your service. Damien finishes the sentence with a flourish and a bow, producing a single rose and offering it to Amanda. Amanda blushes and returns the gesture with a curtsy. My, do you know how to treat a lady? <gasps> Hello, Amanda. <laughs> Seemingly out of nowhere, Joseph's twin kids appear, and uh, they're speaking Whoa. in unison. H hey, won't you come play with us? Huh? Uh... Come play with us. Forever. <laughs> Guys, enough with the creepy twin shtick. We've talked about this. Christian and Christy slowly back away. Oh, God. This bitch. I can't. <laughs> I can't. Okay. We can do this. Where do you think they got that hmm. from? Mary pops into the conversation, wine in oh. hand. I, uh, don't know. Mary takes a long sip of wine. Mm. I think I might have taped over VeggieTales VHS with The Shining. Who knows? She takes another sip of her wine. Where's Krish? Ugh. Wasn't he with you? Ugh. You had him a moment ago. Mm. He's probably stuffing dirt in his mouth. He'll be all right. Toddlers are pretty resilient. Mary tips her glass ah. to me. Ain't my first time to the, to the rodeo. It's my fourth. Give it a rest. I have squeezed out four little... Okay, this is like so far the same. Oh my yeah. God. It's not any different. 
Mary is my BFF maternal. Why? She's the reason I can't get with Joseph. So, no. Can't stand her. Um, Dad, can we go now? Ah, uh, Lucian. Have I introduced you to Karen yet? Hey, it's that punk from Amanda's school. I remember you. Whatever. That's no way for a young man to speak to his elders. Be polite. Lucian bows. Whatever, sir. <laughs> Lucian bows again. <laughs> Mr. Christensen, may I have a veggie burger, sir? <laughs> Coming right up, bud. Are you a vegetarian? Yup. Ugh. Make that two veggie burgers. Did you know that some people in the Victorian area are vegetarians? They described carnivorous type people as blood lappers. Dad. Oh. That's really interesting, Damien. Joseph turns to the grill. Just a hint of tattoo peeks out from... Okay, we already know about his tattoo. Yes, yes. We can just fast forward. Okay. Um, we're going to skip to burger time. In the original, she just flat out loses the baby. Like, I don't know where he is. What? Like, they just, like, drop that whole conversation and the baby's gone. You know, even in this one, even though she find Like, you never see the baby. You never... Like... I don't know what that baby looks like. I don't. So there's something wrong there. Okay. Anyways, burger oh. time. Okay. Now we're gonna we're gonna work some magic. <laughs> oh. Yeah, burger, oh. and they make all the puns. Nice. Nice. Okay. Oh. Yeah, we've seen this. Pretty fun party, don't you think? Okay. Um. I felt like I was at a networking about event. I'm going to get LinkedIn notifications out of this. I just know it. Hmm. You don't think it's nice that people want to connect with you? Not when their affection jams up my inbox, metaphorically hmm. speaking. Well, hey, at least you met some other cool dads. Okay. And then we're going to talk about dad book. Yes. Hmm. Okay. We've seen this. Hmm. Hmm. Um. Let's see. Okay, I just need to get to dad book next. Hey, Lunar, Lunar with the first, hello. How's it going, my friend? What's happening? Something looks weird, hang on. Okay, no, everything's fine. I'm just silly. Hello, hello, I hope you're having a lovely day at church today and I hope the kids are behaving. Okay, we're going to choose um, throw a party. A real rager. All the other dads in the neighborhood are invited. I'll see if I can get you a spot on the list, but honestly, it's looking tight and you may just have to wait in line. I know the guy at the door. I'll get in no problem. I'm just relaxing tonight. Have fun, okay? Great. See you later. Okay. So then she goes off into the night and we know what happens there. And then she finally comes home and we're really mean to her. Um... We, we said I was scared before, but I think this time we're going to say I have a right to be concerned. No, no. We should say I don't like your attitude. Okay, let's just let's just not be a very good dad this time. You can't talk to me like mm -hmm. that. Are you serious? Stop treating me like I'm a child. Then stop acting like one. I told you to check in with me and you didn't. How am I supposed to trust you to make good choices when you when you move out if you can't even check in with me? I sit down on the couch and put my head in my hands. I feel very tired all of a sudden. Yeah, you feel very tired because, like, this this is a ridiculous answer. You really scared me. Just please don't do that again. Uh, uh. All right. I'm going to go to bed now. There's a reason she was home after a curfew, okay? You just don't know what's up. Amanda closes her door and I head to mine. Jeez. As I'm falling asleep, one thing she said keeps echoing in my mind. You're not going to like this when I go off to school, are you? Okay, yeah, we saw that. Okay, and then we have coffee. Um, how about... I trust you to make good choices. We're just going to say good this hey. time. All right. Want some eggs? You know it. Sprinkle some cheese on them? Yeah. Okay. We're going for the bad Amanda ending. Ugh. Oh, and then we have to do dad book. Okay. Okay, okay. Here we go. Um, on Friday night, you're most likely to... Uh, how about this guide says this guy gives me coin collection as the most Damien answer, but I disagree. I think we're going to fall asleep watching the History Channel. If you had one thing to take with you to a desert island, what would it be? 
Um, I don't need anything. My first survival skills have trained me for this day. What are your turn-ons? Uh, my turn-ons are street smarts. What do you want to be when you grow up? I'm a technical writer for manuals and instructionals. What's your favorite movie genre? Uh, for Damien, okay, old comedies that haven't aged well. What's your ideal date? Uh, arson. <laughs> well, you know, he does, he has talked about arson a couple times in this. What do you never leave home without? Uh, let's see. My book of word jumbles in a pen. I spend a lot of time thinking about conspiracy theories. Profile complete. See, that wasn't so bad. Yeah, that was actually kind of fun. I could totally spend all day on here just looking at people's profiles. You should message one of them. Or more, okay, yes. Welcome. You've got dads. <laughs> we do got dads, okay. Uh, we did we did that conversation. So let's just let's just go straight to messaging Damien. Hello, my vampire boy. Okay, how do you do? I finally decided to join this information superhighway. I'm not entirely sure how this works, but I'll try my best to understand. I love long strolls through graveyards and spending time with my son. If you would ever like to chat about the latest Victorian fashion, the inevitability of our own demise, or black cats, please send me a letter. I would like to talk about all of those things, Damien. Especially the inevitability of our own demise. All right. On Friday night, I'm most likely to listen to true crime podcasts while I taxidermy my newest specimens. If you had one thing to take with you to a desert island, what would it be? A coffin. Oh, boy. Um, what are your turn-ons? Pronouncing bosom correctly. Wait. Is it not pronounced bosom? Bosom. I said it right. Bosom. Who? What? What's the other way to say it? Bosom. Bosom. That's UK is the Bosom. first one, and then this is US. Bosom. Bosom. Yeah, I don't. Who pronounces it a different way? I'm. I don't understand. Okay. Anyways, what did you want to be when you grew up? A bat. What's your favorite movie genre? Foreign art house horror. <laughs> What's your ideal date? It's night. We're at an industrial dark wave club, club in Berlin. The music drums to the beat of our hearts. What do you never leave home without? An upside down cross. I spend a lot of time thinking about morality salience. Oh, mortality salience. Okay. All right, let's message him. Hey, dad. Damien seemed really interesting. A little odd, but interesting. I think I should hang out with him to get to know him a little better. I navigate to Damien's dad book page and type out a message. Hey dude, you seem cool. We should hang. Out sometime. I sit there for a minute before I see Damien typing. But then he keeps typing. And typing. Man, is this guy writing a novel? I leave the computer to make some coffee. And he's still typing. I sip my coffee and my computer finally dings. Karen, I must confess my excitement to be receiving your kind letter for, as you see, I do find myself available to enjoy your company. I must ask for your forgiveness, however, as I believe our first meeting did not paint me in as gentlemanly manner as I would have liked. Okay. I would be highly flattered to enjoy your companionship at my residence for an afternoon tea and a stroll around my garden, should it please you. Till then, adieu. Yours, humbled D. Bloodmar. What is with these dads signing their texts? I don't. Is that like a dad thing? The dads sign their texts. I don't know about it. I stare at the screen and reread the letter several more times. Yes, this is a letter. Hey, Amanda. Hmm. Amanda pops out of her room. Her eyes are a little puffy, almost as if she'd been crying. Hey, are you all right? Oh I'm yeah, fine. totally. I'm cool. Huh. I just found out that the succulent I've been watering and singing to for the last three months was actually made of plastic. Even the dirt was fake. Oh, honey. Um. How about... Okay, we're going... We're... It's so hard. We're clicking this one. I'm so sorry about your plant. I can buy you a new one if you want. A real one hmm. this time. That's sweet, but... I rescued that plant, and now I know it's fake. I... She clenches her fist with determination. 
I'm still gonna love it no matter what. <laughs> okay, is this what being a parent is like? Yes, sweetie. Make sure it gets into a good college. Okay, um, let's change the subject. Can you help me with Ugh. something? Dad, for the last time, I'm not popping your back pimples. <laughs> No, no, can you interpret this for me? I turn the computer to Amanda and she squints at Damien's message. I just don't understand NetSpeak. Like, is this how you kids communicate with each other now? Oh, totally. This is a hot new thing. See, Dad, kids got over saying lol and lamo and whatever and decided what they really needed to do was bring it back to the 1800s. So what do you do? Hmm. Well, where's your pen and quill? What? Did you forget to unpack the pen and quill? Dad, how will we address the nobleman in regards to your upcoming debutante ball? Okay, now I know you're messing with me. Father, without proper chaperone, you never end up with a suitor worthy of our land. Huh. Or our dowry. Huh. Or, so you read Pride and Prejudice for school one time and now you're reciting things you know about it back to me, aren't okay. you? Like, the first five pages. Then I read a review of the movie. Still gotta be though. Great, so what do I say to Damien? I got this. Amanda reaches over me and types on the keyboard. Okay, she's writing it for me again. This is good. Sure thing, dude. Regards, right. Karen. Amanda hits send and spiles at me. Well, I suppose that's that. Okay. <gasps> oh, this is his house? Okay. I make the short walk over to Damien's house. Well, I guess you can't really call it a house. It's more of a manor? Estate? The gothic architecture looms above the other homes in the cul-de-sac. I walk past a couple of gargoyles guarding the front door and look around for the doorbell. There doesn't seem to be one. I pull the large, ornately carved bat head door knocker back, and a hollow sound echoes through the house as I strike it against the door. I wait several moments before the door slowly creaks open. It's a little creepy, but I enter the home and take a few steps into the foyer, noting the oil portraits of who I assume are dead relatives hanging on the wall. As I'm admiring them, the front door slams shut behind me. H hello? Silence. An oil lamp in the corner flickers dimly, casting ominous shadows against the wall. Why do I feel like all the people in these paintings are staring straight at me? Why is it so cold in here? Where's Damien? Karen, pleasure to have you in my home. Why did you just walk in, my dude? Why? Why did you just walk into his house? I look up and see Damien standing at the top of a majestic staircase with a walking candle holder. What's, uh, what's with the door slamming shut? Uh. Oh, sorry. There was a draft. And the door creaking open when I knocked? Uh. I accidentally left the door unlocked. And the creepy oil painting. Mm. I like oil paintings. Right. Ah. Uh. Right. Mm. Please, let me show you around. Okay. Damien leads me around his house, showcasing his parlor sitting room, auxiliary sitting room, and the parlor again, for some reason. This is one of the older homes on the block. Oh, this is Damien again. Wait, why is there a folder icon here? Oh, is this? Oh, that's probably like to go back. This is one of the older homes on the block. Yes, but nowhere near as old as the architecture might suggest. Though extens through extensive renovations, I've been able to craft a residence that is both historically accurate to the Victorian period and equipped with the amenities of any modern dwelling. We walk past a door covered in bumper stickers, caution tape, and a black parade poster. Did they listen to my chemical romance in the Victorian era? That's my son's room. You know how the rebellious teenage years are. Onward, onward. There's more to see. Hmm. We reach a door at the end of the hall and Damien opens with a flourish. Hmm. And this is the library. Sunlight streams in from the floor to ceiling arched windows. The walls are lined with packed bookshelves and even more books are scattered over the period appropriate furniture. Damien is clearly really proud of this room. Okay, let's. we gotta look at all the things. I didn't understand that before, but I understand that now. Oh, I walk to the window and I'm greeted by a beautiful view of Damien's backyard. It showcases a beautiful view of the rest of the cul-de-sac. Hey, I can see Craig on his lawn. He's doing push-ups with his daughter on his back. Damn. He sees me and waves happily, doing push-ups with one hand now. Damn. Uh. <laughs> well, did you know that the Victorians spent at least 20 hours a week gazing longingly out of full-length windows? Wait, really? Oh. No, the Victorians did appreciate telling a good joke. <laughs> wow. Get it, Carrie! Kendra, guess what? We're, we're doing Damien's route. How are you today? Okay, so we're gonna look at the butterflies. 
I walk up to the glass display of pin, pin, yeah, pinned bugs on the wall. It's pretty impressive. Nice bugs. Ugh. I pin them all myself. Maybe I could show you how sometime. I'm concerned I would stick the pin right through my finger. Oh, <laughs> oh the pinner's gambit. <laughs> oh, wait. <gasps> Remember in our first playthrough how we got a box of dead butterflies? Okay, I guess that's gonna come into play more this time. Is that a thing? Mm. No. <laughs> what? He's such a jokester. Okay. This vampire man, he's still a dad. He's still a dad. <laughs> All right. You know, Karen, in the Victoria era, there was some controversy surrounding reading. Many people thought the more tawdy novels would encourage youths into a life of crime and would cause too much of a distraction from work and school. I pull out a book at random and examine the worn cover. Opening it, I turn to a random page and read aloud. Naruto struggled against... Bobby summoned this. Okay... Okay, they come in, they say, get it, Karen. Now we're reading fanfic. I just, I just, I just wanted, that's what happened. That was a series of events. Okay. Naruto struggled against the chains that Sasuke had bound him with. Shirtless and out of breath, he looked up at Sasuke. Sasuke smirked, unbuttoning his ninja pants. Wow. What? Okay, I think that's enough. Damien snaps the book shut and puts it back onto the shelf. Hmm. That's a rare book from my private collection. Please, will you join me for tea? Okay, okay. I follow Damien into his sitting room where finger foods have already been uh, set out upon a beautiful tire tiered silver tray. I take a seat on one of the high back chairs as Damien pours and serves me some tea. I can't believe we're having high tea. I never thought I'd get to do this. Damien smiles to himself. What? Oh. It's a common misconception that high tea refers to the wealth or class of people enjoying it, when in fact the high refers to both the later time of day than that the working class had to enjoy tea and the height of the tables on which they were served. Oh, oh. my dear friend, we're currently enjoying afternoon tea. That's informative. Damien takes a seat next to me and serves me a tiny sandwich. Um, okay. Let's see. Your home is really... Oh! We got some eggplants. We got some eggplants. Okay. It seems like you really put a lot of work into this place. Oh. But thank you. Hmm. No one's ever complimented my home before. Hell, I can barely get matching salt and pepper shakers in my place. And look at what you've done. I'm kind of jealous. Hmm. That's very generous of you to say. What got you so interested in goth stuff? Oh. Well, when I was a young boy, my father. Did he take you into the city? Hmm. Sorry? Haha, <laughs> <laughs> did you guys see a marching band? <gasps> I'm afraid I don't understand. <laughs> You're serious? Of course. But it's, you know, the song. Amanda made me listen to it. Seriously? Uh. I'd love to see a marching band. <sighs> oh gosh. Oh gosh, okay. Oh. Nevertheless, I've always had a love for the art, history, and fashion. What started off as a small hobby of collecting taxidermied animals grew into sort of an obsession. It's a privilege to be able to appreciate the lives and culture of those who came before us, I think. Why not go all the way? Oh. I like not dying when I catch a cold. He takes a sip of tea. Yeah. I can acknowledge that there were many terrible things about the Victorian era, and to try to live a life that strictly aligns with those ideals would be admittedly horrid. Mm. But I think it takes a critical mind to truly appreciate something to the fullest, to be cognizant of its flaws and love it huh. all the same. Tell me, Karen, do you have any hobbies? Oh man, I do, but I don't know if I care about anything the way you care about this stuff. Karen, your browser fucking amazing. What in the world has changed? My dear friend Jane taught me this trick to where you only have to do your brows once a week. Okay? So, Jane, I'm going to share I'm going to share your tip with the class. Okay. Here's what you do. You get the beard dye to that men use on their grays. And you put it on the thin parts of your eyebrows. 
Now, it looks like your eyebrows are filled in for a week without you having to do anything. It's truly magical. I am so happy. <laughs> By the way, for, for me and the, the color of my hair and my skin, I used, um, I used, uh, Just For Men's, uh, light brown, if that helps for anybody considering to do this. What are eyebrows, if not eye beards? Exactly, Shadow. Exactly. How long did you do yours? I'm being such a wuss about it. Five minutes. I did five minutes. And I used the, the little eyebrow, my eyebrow brush. So what I so I would like so I would like muscle memory stroke exactly like I would when I was doing my eyebrows. I use the same brush and I just washed it before and after. I'm gonna do seven tonight. Yes, because I mean I'm looking at this and I think I could go darker to be quite honest. Like and I do get did get the box of medium brown to see. So um, yeah, yeah, it really helped and I didn't get it anywhere outside of where I wanted it to be. So I was pretty happy with that. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna do the same thing. Wash the brush, do it, wash the brush again. Same same brush I would use to do my eyebrows. And um, yeah, I'll let you guys know how long it lasts. I did it Friday. I did it Friday, so this is day day three. And they're still looking pretty good. Like they look on camera, they look exactly the same as when I do the makeup. So I'm very happy with it. And in real life, they look better than when I do the makeup. Cause you can't, cause I'm not putting makeup on them, you know? So it just, it looks better. Oh man, I do, but I don't know if I care about anything the way you care about this stuff. Huh. Well, I'd love to hear about your interests. Hearing someone talk about the things they're passionate about is intriguing, and quite honestly, rather attractive. Right, like eyebrows. Like eyebrows right now, with you guys. <laughs> uh -huh. Please, do tell me about your hobbies. Quick, sound sophisticated. I'm passionate about eyebrows, me too. I just, I ruined them. I ruined them in the 90s, you know? And it really wasn't a big deal until I got into my 30s and like everything started kind of thinning. And then it's like, they just looked like crap. Kids, if thin eyebrows comes in fashion, don't do it. Just just don't do it. Just skip that trend. Just skip that trend. Ruin your brows for life. Okay. Um, I like watching soap making videos on the internet. Who doesn't? Um, love me some word jumbles. I learned how to juggle once. Okay, what are we supposed to say? Or we're supposed to say word jumbles. Okay. He loves it. Okay. The uh, written word fascinates me. We spend so much time using words, you know, and uh, I think people would appreciate them more if they had to unjumble them. Hmm. It's poetic, really. Oh. oh, so you're a writer. In a sense. We finish our tea and finger sandwiches. Uh. Come, I have one more thing to show you. Damien takes me around the back of his home where a variety of flowers flourish in beautifully landscaped rows. A small stone path weaves through it and butterflies flit lazily through the air. Oh. My garden, it's beautiful. Hmm. Thank you. Oh. Victorians took flowers and floral arrangements very seriously. Oh. You see, it was considered uncouth to discuss personal and romantic relationships in public, so lovers and friends alike would use bouquets to send secret messages to each other, each flower and plant symbolic of different feelings. Oh. Even more interesting is that one flower could mean different things depending on the other plants it was paired with. One had to be extremely careful, as even the style in which the ribbon was tied around the bouquet affected the message. Mm. Damien leans down and plucks a gorgeous bright orange flower off of a vine. Lilium bulbif bulbiferum, or something like that. The orange lily, what do you think about this one means? Okay, I think it means, um, thou art the tightest. <laughs> That's what we're supposed to answer. Okay, thou art the tightest. Yes, okay. <laughs> the orange lily is actually symbolic of pure hatred. Well, hmm. and that's precisely why floral arrangements are so challenging. What's your favorite type of flower? Um, we like snapdragons. Because they're cute. And you can do that thing where you squeeze them so it looks like they're talking. What a lovely choice. I'll have to remember that when I put together a bouquet for you. This is already going so much better than Joseph. I'm so happy. He would put together a bouquet for me? No one's ever given me a bouquet before. I follow Damien down the footpath and admire more of his beautiful flowers. Suddenly a phone rings. Huh. Oh, Karen, will you excuse me? I must take this. He puts his cell phone out of his pocket. I'm a little surprised it's not a rotary phone. Go for it. Oh. Damien is best daddy so far, agree. Damien smiles and walks back to the house. The house. I take a deep breath and enjoy the heavily perfumed air. What a lovely yard. 
This makes me wish I had put a little more effort into that garden Amanda and I tried to start one time. Our watermelons grew to the size of cherry tomatoes and then immediately died. <laughs> Sounds like me. Oh, hey, a gargoyle. Oh, no, I knocked over the gargoyle. Oh, Fix shit. That guard. Oh, shit. <gasps> oh, no, I broke it. I broke his garg. Oh no. Oh no, that's the head. Yeah, that's wrong. I guess this goes first. Haha, ha, okay. I had it right the first time, I just wasn't as accurate as I should have been. Oh my gosh. You definitely go this way. Why? Yeah, that's backwards. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna run out of time! I'm gonna run out of time! Ah! Why is it not going? Out of time! A busted! Oh shit, he's gonna be mad at me. I'm supposed to win the gargoyle mini game too, according to this guide. Oh no. Okay. Crap, crap, crap. I can't figure this out. Oh no. Here comes Damien. He looks upset. I hope he's not. It's not about the guard. <sighs> My sincerest apologies to have kept you waiting. This is an urgent matter that I must attend to, so. What? Oh, it was upside down? Karen, did you break my gargoyle? All I did was lean on it. What? I just had it installed last week. I. No, no matter. I suppose it will give me a chance to work on my masonry skills. Oh no, Shadow, do I need to redo it? Do I need to go back to my last save? Now if you excuse me, I'm afraid I must take my leave. That's no problem, dude. Everything all right? Damien worries the hem of his coat with his fingers and looks away. Everything's perfectly fine, but I, uh, it's Lucian. What's wrong? He appears to have, well, his teacher needs me to come to the school post haste. Do you need help? Oh no, you don't have to. Let me come with you. Us dad's got to stick together. Huh. You're right. This is one of Lucian's more elaborate stunts. I would greatly treasure having another parent by my side. Let's go. Hmm. Okay. I guess we can load this save. It's only from a few minutes ago. Okay, so we'll just fast forward to the gargoyle minigame. Oh, huh. Okay, this is Thou Art the Tightest. And then we're going to do Snapdragons. Okay, and we're not going to fail this time. All right, this one goes first. And it's like this. Nope. Oh my gosh, why am I so bad at this? It's this one that goes first. No! Okay. I don't... I don't... How do you turn it... Oh! Like that. Okay, you right-click. Oh, and it stays turned back over. That's why I'm messing it up. That's why I'm messing it up. Okay. Okay, yay! Okay, I did it this time. Yeah, they were all upside down. Okay, that was very confusing for me. Whew, that was close. Uh-oh, here comes Damien. He looks <sighs> upset. Karen, my sincerest apology is to have kept you waiting. There's an urgent matter that I must attend to, so I'm afraid I must take my leave. No problem, dude. Everything all right? Okay. Then he's, yep. Yep, and it's Lucian. And we're gonna go to the school. Yes, us dads gotta stick together. Let's go. Hmm. Damien and I walk into the school and are immediately greeted by an anxious looking uh. Hugo. Hey Damien, you're here in record time. Oh, yeah. I wouldn't miss it for the world, dear friend. Wow, whatever it is, it doesn't seem like this is Hugo and Damien's first time to the My Kids Are In Trouble rodeo. Huh. What is it this time? Oh. This, Damien, you have to see to believe. Damien and I fall into step behind Hugo, who leads us through the busy corridors of the school. We pass by several classes in session, and I vaguely wonder if Amanda's around. Hugo eventually ushers us into a small boiler room with a flight of rickety stairs leading down into the darkness. Watch your step. 
I can hear faint voices drifting up from the basement, and they don't sound happy. As I'm led into the depths of the school, I recall the antics I got into as an angsty middle schooler. At least I had enough sense to stay out of creepy basements. We find another teacher in a boiler room tucked away in the back of the basement. With him are Lucian and Ernest, Hugo's son. Lucian has a bloody nose. Oh, wait, Ernest is Hugo's son? Oh, it's the trouble. Okay, so both the troublemakers. Okay, thanks for coming. I can't make heads or tails of this. I look around the scene of the crime and see a bunch of bricks and some masonry tools scattered Mm. around. What happened here? Ernest punched me. Lucian tried to kill me. Oh, my. The room falls silent. I was not trying to kill you, dumbass. I was just trying to build a brick wall around you and see what would happen. You promised me there was wine down here. You tricked me. Hmm. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait a second. Lucian, did you try to cask of Amontiano, Ernest? I'm neither confirming nor denying that. I turned to Damien and whispered to him. What's uh, the cask of Amontiano? I don't even know if I'm saying that right. I don't think I've ever said that word out loud. Yeah, I don't know. It's wine. Hmm. The wine cask. It's a classic Edgar Allan Poe short story where a man gets his enemy drunk, lures him down to his cellar with the promise of wine and a fine vintage, and buries him alive behind a brick wall. Hmm. It's a lovely story. So wait, Lucian, you tried to do that to him. I was curious to see how it would turn out. I wasn't actually going to leave him there. What was the thought process here? That Ernest was just going to sit still while you slowly built a tomb around him? Well, it worked for like 20 minutes because he's an idiot. But then he realized that I had lied about the wine. And you were cackling maniacally. That sort of tipped me off. Ernest, 20 minutes? Dad? Sweet man, It took you 20 minutes? Son, we just did an entire two-week unit on the cask of Amontillado. And it took you 20 minutes to realize Lucian was leading you into an elaborate ruse. Did you even read the story? I read the first five pages and then read a review of the movie. Sweet Manchego. Wow. It's only five pages long and there is no movie. Haha, <laughs> yeah, you're right. I paid Lucian to read it for me. Hmm. Actually, he didn't even pay me. So when you think about it, this was me teaching him a lesson. Damien and Hugo both have their heads in their hands. Oh my god. You guys are always telling me to engage in the literature, and I did. I don't see a problem here. All right. I'm filing this under what the hell. Don't do whatever that was. Again, uh, you two are both suspended for a week. Oh my god. <laughs> they definitely deserve more than that. Well, Lucian deserves more than that for doing that. Taking advantage of poor stupid Ernest. Ernest and Lucian high five. The teacher starts to stomp up the stairs. Hugo, I'll cover your class. Take your son home. Mr. Bloodmarch, you too. Thank you for your meditation. We all head up the stairs and out of the school in tense silence. Lucian, Damien, and I all pile into the car and begin the drive home. Lucian immediately puts his hood up and stares out the window angrily. I'm not going to therapy again. Mm. Mm. I know, son. It's entirely up to you whether or not you want to go. But I care about you, and I can see that you're struggling. So if you do decide that you'd like to speak to a professional about your feelings, we can do that too. Mm. Maybe you can spend the next week looking for a summer job, hmm? I know how much you want to own, want your own car. I can't believe Damien's keeping his cool. I'm impressed. Fine. Thanks for not freaking out too hard. <laughs> I love you, son. Mm. Lucien continues staring out of the window. Love you too. We spend the rest of the drive in relative silence. The moment we pull into the driveway, Lucien hops out of the car, slams the door, and runs inside. Oh. I didn't expect to have that conversation in front of you. He and I have a lot we need to work out. It's all right, and all things considered, Lucien's bricklaying was pretty good, so they're just overlining. Huh. <laughs> sure, yeah, he's good at laying bricks, right. There is that, yes. Okay, um, we're going to do... Yeah, I really admired how you handled that. You were a lot more diplomatic with him than I would have been. I just want what's best for him. And I don't think yelling at him would do either of us any favors. It rarely does. You're a good dad. (gasps) See you around soon? It would be my honor and my pleasure. Damien bows with a flourish. Classy. Eh? I come home to find Amanda curled up on the couch with a blanket watching TV. I plop down next to her. Yo, what you watching? Tiny House Hunting Brothers Extreme Edition. Uh, I hate this show. 
A couple on screen bickers back and forth while standing in an extremely small house made out of recycled bottles. The tiny house hunting brothers watch them with bemused expressions, both of their heads touching the low ceiling. I told you I wanted two bed, two bath, shabby sheet cottage. This house doesn't even have a bathroom. But honey, the outhouse is only 20 yards away. It's not that bad. I am not pooping outside, Greg. <laughs> Why don't they just get a regular sized house? Hmm. I don't know. Huh? How'd the afternoon tea go? I got, it got strange. We had to go to the school to pick up Lucy and since he tried huh. to, he lured Ernest down to the cellar with the promise of fine vintage and tried to brick him into a wall, right? How did you know that? Has everyone read this story yeah. except me? Lucy and live stream the entire thing. This entire day is beyond me, but otherwise it was a fun day. That Damien guy is a character, but he's really good company and surprisingly a diplomatic dad. I dig his style. You know what? Me too. Wow. Okay, let's see what we scored. Oh my gosh, Amontillado basement. Goth. Yeah, Are you S -rank. familiar with the works of Corey Feldman? He simply slayed in the Lost Boys. <laughs> what the heck? That was a line. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Yes, I am liking Damien. Okay. Oh, this achievement for this one's called Interview with a Vampire. Wow. That is, uh, that is quite the achievement name. Okay, we're one out of three on that. Okay, this is the mail truck. Um, I guess this might turn out differently now that... So I don't want to fast forward too much. Oh, wait, this is the college first. Oh. Mm. Yeah, she gets in. Yay. Okay, and then we do the burritos. Welcome. Okay. You got dads. Time to message Damien again. Oh, wait, what's this? This is new. Hey, are you up to anything tonight? Hugo and I were planning to go to the art walk downtown and we're wondering if you'd care to accompany us. I would normally write a letter long-handed, but I've run out of distressed parchment paper. Whoa, why can I see Damien and Hugo's chat? Am I a hacker? But I don't even have hacker alias. The feds are gonna bust down my door any minute now. I've gotta destroy this computer. Karen, this is a group chat. Oh, thank God. Do either of you know how to destroy a computer? You can run Derek's boot and nuke from a startup flash drive, but once you've done that, it's best to physically destroy the platers altogether. Why does Damien know this? Why does he know so much about computers if he's so into Victorian stuff? There is something else going on here. Okay, Damien, I changed my mind. He's not really a vampire. I thought it was going to be like he's a vampire, like in Boyfriend Dungeon or whatever, right? Or like how they're, one of the, the characters in Hatu Full Boyfriend was literally an angel. I thought it was going to be like that. I changed my mind. I don't think it's like that. Um, the Victorians are well-versed in information security. Yeah, okay. Karen, do you want to go see some art or not? Art is good. Let's go see art. Okay. Um, da, 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 da. do what am I supposed to do this? I guess I should see the art, but that's not, apparently that's not the next thing I have to do. I guess this is just optional. Okay, let's do it. Let's see the art. Damien and Hugo invited me to the monthly art walk in downtown Maple Bay. I've never really been one to, to uh, bleh, been to one of these before, so I'm not quite sure what I'm in for. I think I'm here a bit early. I don't see Damien or Hugo around anywhere, and I feel just a little uncomfortable standing among all these fancy art people. Karen? I turn around, and it's Joseph. Joseph, what are you doing here? Uh -huh. Joseph scoffs at me. What am I doing here? How could you ask me that? I'm obviously a huge art uh appreciate appreciator appreciatist oh. uh, the mini games and chats are part of the new version so they might not be in the guide depending on when they were done yeah i have no idea i just went on game facts and um found threads of people asking for a spoiler free guide and then everyone was recommending this one so i'm using it because i didn't want any spoilers i just wanted to know like how to not fail <laughs> so yeah who knows <laughs> Okay, fine. Damien invited me to this art walk thing. 
I'm guessing he invited you too. Yep, admittedly, a little out of my depth here. Thank God, I thought I was going to be the odd one out. Are you allowed to say that? Say what? You know, thank God. <laughs> yep, I actually get double points when I say it, since I'm a minister. <sighs> the points get you into heaven. That's how it works. Anyway, where are the guys? I look and spot Hugo and Damien, who seem to have just arrived at the gallery. Good eve, good eve, good eve. <laughs> Evening, friends. Hmm? Who's ready for some art? Um, uh, let's see. I know I am. You know, I love looking at paintings that are in frames and also paintings that aren't in frames. Art is good and right. stuff. Well put, Karen. Ah. All you have to do is know if you're ever feeling overwhelmed, there's generally always a table that has free wine and cheese. I like art now. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a table in my sights. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go help myself to some tiny wines. Okay, let's do, let's talk art with Hugo and Damien. So what's this first place? <laughs> this particular artist specializes in landscape paintings in various locales within the American Northeast. Hmm, I look at the art. It's rad art. <laughs> at the risk of sounding uninformed, do all of these landscapes look like butts to you guys? Ah. Damien and Hugo lean in, examining the paintings uh. in earnest. It would appear as if you are correct. Hmm. Valid assessment, Karen. Hey, this art stuff's pretty hmm. easy. <laughs> oh, it gets more complicated. Ah. Sometimes the butts are more symbolic. Sometimes the butts are metaphors. Sometimes art is about butts. They don't draw. Hmm, interesting. Joseph returns to our group with tiny cheese and wine. What did I miss? Hey. Butts. <laughs> Shame. The cheese is nice, though. Oh. Shall we visit the next place? We leave the first gallery and walk a few minutes before we reach another one. This gallery is a bit more crowded. Huge paintings of... I'm not even sure. Hang on the walls. All art is butts, true. If it's not butts, then it's boobs. I've just explained all of art. Mm. Oh... Oh geez, what am I looking at here? Ah. This this is abstract art. I think the more important question is, what does this art mean to you? I stare at the painting, concentrating as hard as I can on its meaning. Um, let's see. It's a butt. It's a butt. Hmm. Everyone else stares at the painting. Yeah, that's definitely a butt. I. Oh. Hmm. Well, a valid assessment. I feel like the artist was trying to make a different statement. Probably how much he liked butts. <laughs> you are a servant of the Lord. Okay. We're all God's creatures, even butts. Oh. <laughs> Comparing this piece of the artist's body of work, I'm pretty sure this represents the sense of isolation he feels creating traditional abstract artwork in a field that's rapidly moving towards digitization. Wow. How'd you figure that? Ah. That's what it says on the placard. <laughs> Oh, uh. <laughs> let's look at a few more of these. We walk around the gallery, sampling some more of the artist's work. I almost hate to say it, but abstract art is kind of growing on me. It's interesting that the artist chooses not to let their work be defined by, what's the word? Realism? Realism. As we're looking at one of the paintings, a patron scoffs loudly. Psh, I could do that. Hmm. Excuse me? What? Hugo, not here. Oh. No, come back here. The patron walks away, not noticing Hugo fuming right next ah. to him. You say you could do that, but you didn't. You don't seem to have the intellectual depth or the artistic skill to execute a piece even a fraction as impressive as this one. I'm not angry. Art is the truest expression of the self. It seems like your self is bad, so your art would also be bad. Hugo's insult game isn't the best, but there's no denying his passion. Damien's holding him back at this point. Friend, friend, he's not worth it. <sighs> Hugo manages to cool down. He smooths his jacket. <sighs> I'm sorry, I just love art very much. We know, buddy. I pat Hugo on the shoulder. Oh. You know what would ease the mood? Is it cheese? No. Ah. It's wine and cheese. Oh. <laughs> Co-signed. The four of us head over to the wine and cheese table, which thankfully is grounded in realism and is actual wine and cheese. Ah. We got one last stop on the tour. You feeling up for it? Is it gonna be any weirder than oh. the art? It is absolutely weirder than this art. Let's do it. Hi. Hmm. Damien, Hugo, Joseph, and I walk over to the performance in the street. Several masked performers and leotards undulate wildly on the ground, screaming both at each other and at us. Oh. So, quick question. Oh. 
Shoot. What is happening? Yeah. I second this question. Hey. Performance art. What does it mean? Oh. Again, I pose the very same question to you, Mr. Terry. Oh no, okay. Um fear of existence, the very humanity of being human. They really like screaming butts. Butts. What do you think they're trying to say? Yeah. Oh. I believe it's less about what they're trying to say and more about why they're saying it. I think there's something special about performance art. With almost every other form of art, music, painting, photography, the artist uses their medium as a conduit for their emotions. Oh. With performance art, the medium is the artist. It's the purest expression of raw human emotion. It's art as catharsis, kind of like streaming. Streaming is performance art. I agree. Uh. That's beautiful, Damien. So what you're saying uh. is, if I start making really loud fart noises right now, it's art, as long as I like really mean it. Damien flexes him with a hard stare, hey. or fixes him, fixes him. <sighs> I was gonna start making fart noises, but based on that look on your face, that joke isn't gonna play well with this crowd. Ah. Oh. Wise. Mm. <laughs> we watch the rest of the performance as earnestly as we can and clap politely after the dancers scream their way off stage. <sighs> I think I'm all arted out. Agreed. We all decide to walk home together. Hmm? We make our way back to the cul-de-sac, tiny wine and tiny cheese sloshing around in my stomach. I think what I've learned about tonight, and not just what I've learned about art, which was nice and extremely informative, but what I've learned tonight is that when you put a bunch of tiny wine and tiny cheese together, it eventually becomes regular wine and regular cheese, followed by too much wine and too much cheese. Oh. The tiny cheese lured me into a false sense of security. I felt safe with the tiny cheese. Wax wings too close to the sun. Oh. Cheese wings? Those would melt in the sun too. And I feel like it's more appropriate mm. imagery. Plus it'd be delicious. A nice emmentholer? Em emmentholer, possibly? Mm. Hey, if you guys want painters, what would you paint? Huh. I actually dabble in oils. I mostly paint landscapes. I'm not very good, but it's a nice way to pass the oh. time. I think I would focus on personal portraits of people in unique professions, like for example, luchadors. Hmm. I think I'd paint boats, seascapes, maybe some lighthouses, mostly boats. Really? Ah. Yeah, I'm surprised you're choosing boats in favor of long history or religious imagery and artwork. Oh. What? Boats are cool. Oh. What about you, Karen? Um. Oh gosh, okay. I have to an I have to give the butts answer. Okay, I can't. Yeah, I'm on a roll. Okay, so we're gonna go with tasteful nudes of the artist. Hmm. Butts, essentially. Art is a money making business. I know what sells. We finally get into the cold sack. All right, boys. Good art. Good art. Ah. Agreed. Ah. See you guys around. Whether you want to or not, we're all neighbors after all. I head inside to deal with my inevitable cheese over. Okay, that was fun. Welcome. Okay. You've got dads. Oh. Okay. We already did this, but I'm just going to click it again. Yeah, she's on dad book. Okay, let's talk to Damien again. Message. I had a lot of fun hanging out with Damien the other day. I wonder what he's up to. I open up dad book and start writing him a message when Amanda walks in the door. <laughs> dad, you got a letter. Oh, is that from grandma? No, it's from Damien. Whoa, can I see it? Amanda hands me a piece of old parchment folded into an envelope and sealed with purple wax. Damn, that too goes all out. I pry off the seal and unfold the letter. In the most beautiful calligraphy, the letter reads, oh wow, okay. Dearest Karen, I hope you find my continued correspondence endearing rather than trying. One can only hope that the use of the slower, more traditional forms of communication will showcase my sincere and earnest sentiment that I greatly enjoyed our time together. I write this hastily under the warm embrace of excitement, fearful that I may misstep and speak towards something unwelcome. For now, I hope that you might forgive my boldness. I will simply say that your company has greatly occupied my thoughts. While the afternoon may have been derailed by forces unforeseen, your companionship helped a great deal, not only in the discipline of my child, but in the morale of my spirit. And for that, I thank you. That said, Karen, if you'll allow me, it would mean the world to me if I could enjoy more of your time. Perhaps a trip to the cinema, followed by a moonlit stroll would be to your taste. I eagerly await your response. With great respect, D. Bloodmarch. 
Amanda and I both look up from the letter. Wow, he's good. So you gonna catch a movie with him? Yeah, I better message him on dad book and let him know. Amanda slaps my laptop Whoa. shut. You have to write him back, a real letter. But my handwriting looks like two toddlers fighting over a crayon. Dad, you have to, he wrote you a letter. That's so cool. Will you help me? I need to class this up. Mm. Father, I was made for this. Here's what you do. Find tickets to a show that you two will like, then enclose them in the letter. Oh, that's classy. Amanda and I hop onto my laptop and peruse showtimes. He doesn't seem like a romantic comedy type of guy. Oh, he's one. Vampire Crusade 2? Evil never dies. I don't know. That sounds kind of stupid. Actually, it's a critically acclaimed exploration into the ennui of existence. It really turns the vampire trip on its head. Really? Hmm. Nah, there's just lots of blood in vampire titties. <laughs> well, I mean, then it's probably good. Well, let's roll the dice. Oh. I purchase the tickets and print them out, then sit down at the table with Amanda to try to draft a nice letter. I start writing. Damien. Okay. Um. This one. Good morrow to you on the... Yeah. I hope this... I do hope this letter finds you in good health. Good one. What's next? Okay. Hey, remember when your son tried to cast a mania? You've been good. I must confess of my amateur control of the written word. Okay, this one. Geez, Dad, have some faith in yourself. Okay, we're trucking along. Let him know how you're feeling. Okay, I'm supposed to choose... You find me in good spirits, for I felt very much the same after our last encounter. I did very much enjoy the adventure we fought ourselves... We found ourselves on last we met. That earnest shit was pretty messed up. Okay, but we're supposed to choose this one. Yeah. Nice. Ask him to hang out already. True art takes time, Amanda. Okay, now we're supposed to choose this one. While a strange turn of events, I found myself enamored of the situation at hand. Um, I like Brugel's landscape with the fall of Icarus. I find myself lost in your details. <laughs> Let me um get at that. <laughs> what? Okay, there we go. Mm -hmm. This one. Bring it home, pops. Okay. Um, it would bring me great pleasure to escort you to the cinema. Um, let me take you out. I got two tickets for the movies. I would very much enjoy your company accompanying me to the cinema. <laughs> We're supposed to choose this one. Yeah. Smooth. Calling it the cinema is a classy move. Enclosed, you'll find two tickets to Vampire Crusade 2, Evil Never Dies, which I'm sure you'll find both titillating and enjoyable. Okay. Best wishes. Hard daps. Hard daps. Is it supposed to be hard dabs? Okay. We're supposed to choose Namaste. And then I'll sign my name, my full name, fancier that way, Karen Terry. Huh. Is this okay? Amanda reads over my sloppy handwriting. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is exactly what we wrote. Okay, sweet. Hmm. You spelled his name wrong. What? Mm -hmm. Nah, just trying to keep you on your toes. <laughs> now all you have to do is seal it and put it in his mailbox. Can I seal it with the tape? Yes. That's not authentic enough. I have an idea. I'll be right back. Amanda leaves the room and returns with a candle, a lighter, and a small piece of wood. You gotta have a wax seal. She lights the candle, which starts to burn down to form a pool of melted wax. What's the other thing? Amanda pours some of the wax onto the folded letter and expertly presses the small piece of wood into it. Let's, she lets it dry for a second and pulls the wood away, revealing, here it is, your sigil. A little kitten with a bow on its head? Awesome. How did she have that? Oh, scrapbooking stuff. Scrapbooking stuff always comes in clutch. Okay. Well, I guess that's all there is to do is deliver it to his doorstep mm. now, huh? Oh, I thought we were getting a carrier pigeon to do it. I already called my guy. Mm. <laughs> I have a pigeon guy. Marcus has good pigeons. <gasps> don't get your pigeons from Anthony. They're no good. I don't want to know if any of this is true. None of this is true. None of this is true, my dude. I head outside and walk over to Damien's house. I slip the letter into the slot in his door and go back home. Hmm. Mission accomplished. Now we play the waiting game. The night finally rolls around where I was supposed to meet with Damien. The next day, he had left another beautifully crafted letter thanking me for mine and agreeing to the evening. Amanda helps me pick out a nice outfit, and I show up to the theater a little bit early. It's a chilly night, and the theater's kind of crowded, but it's still nice. How do you do? Anthony has ship visions, he does. It's true. It's true. You, you know. You know when you see Anthony's pigeons. You just know. I jump at the sound of his voice and turn around to see Damien right behind me. 
You almost gave me a heart attack. How long were you there for? <sighs> I don't know. I just walked up. My apologies for frightening you. Was that thunder? Is it going to rain soon? Hmm. I don't hear anything. What? Huh. What? What? Hmm. Regardless, the hour grows close. Hmm. Shall we take our seats in the cinema? I must thank you again for purchasing our tickets. Oh. Please allow me to repay the deed in Sour Patch Kids or perhaps Milk Duds. Let's do it. We get in line to buy snacks. As we're waiting, I hear a familiar voice behind us. Ugh, my dad's here. I turn around to find Lucian standing a few feet behind us with a gaggle of other goth kids. Oh. Lucian, how nice to see you. I didn't know you were coming to the theater. I'm glad to see you spending time, some quality time with your friends. Whatever, Dad. Ugh. And what movie will you be attending tonight? My friends are making me see some kids' movie about talking animals. I don't really care about it. Well, I do hope you enjoy your evening. We'll be watching Vampire Crusade 2. Evil never dies. What? You watching that? Yeah, I thought Damien would enjoy it. Ha! Huh. Huh. Good luck with that, Dad. Lucian rejoins his friends, and I look over to Damien. Good luck with what? Mm. It's nothing. My son loves to tease. We wait in line for a little longer, and Damien buys us snacks. He seems a little nervous. I wonder what's wrong. I don't think Lucian was making it up. Hmm. Damien and I take our seats and settle in for previews. Glancing at him, I can see what he's see that he's sweating profusely and gripping his armrest. Um, is everything okay? Everything's perfectly fine. Hmm. I'm uh, so excited for this film. I'm a devoted patron of the arts, especially the scary arts. The scarier art, the better. Do you have a favorite horror movie? Mm. I... Of course I have a favorite horror movie. Mine is... Halloween Town. Terrifying. <laughs> That's not... Damien. Oh, interesting. Huh. That's odd. I don't seem to remember Halloween Town being that scary. I would have expected him to bring up some sort of strange foreign horror film that I'd never heard of. Damien's knuckles are turning white. It looks like he's about to rip the armrest off. Wait a second. Damien, are you afraid of horror movies? Oh my. You must be joking. I love horror movies. The lights dim for the ah! film. Damien screams. I apologize. I was thinking about something far scarier than this movie, which is not scary at all. We settle in as the film starts. I offer Damien some licorice and he takes one. I take note of how much his hands ah! are shaking. The title flashes us across the screen in bloody letters. Vampire Crusade 2, Evil Never oh. Dies. A pale man with long silver hair, glittering red eyes, and well-oiled abs sits up in a coffin. Awaken my coven. Two more vampires slide the tops of their stone coffins onto the floor. Brother, is it time? Yes, husband. But also, mortal enemy, it is time. <laughs> the three look at each other and then into the camera. For the Vampire Crusade. This rules. The trio of vampires fly off into the night as foreboding organ music plays in the distance. I somehow get lost in the movie. As dumb as it sounded, it's actually a pretty fun flick. Ugh. We get to a tense moment of the movie where Romulus Trueblood sits at, his, at, at a truce meeting with the general of the human army, whose wife Romulus has fallen in love with. Romulus, it's good to finally meet you. General. I agree. It's good to finally blood you. Romulus leaps out and slashes the general's throat. Blood splatters over everything, including the <sighs> camera. Damien screams again, reflexively grasping my hand. I immediately blush, forgetting about any vampires or blood or vampiric oh blood. Oh my. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. Damien re retracts his hand and places it back in huh. his lap. No, what? I was writing a novel in my head about the blood magic, and I got into an extremely scary section. Damien goes back to quietly stressing out over the movie. It's kind of cute that he won't admit that he's afraid of it. I wish he would hold my hand again. Me too! Maybe I could do something to try to make him feel more comfortable. I've got it. I'll do what all dads do best. Talk during the movie. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Point out a plot hole. Okay, we're going to tell a dad joke. Where does a dog go when he loses what? its tail? Where? To the retail store. I yell that last bit too loud for a crowd of movie theater, but I can see a smile form on Damien's uh -huh. face. Good one, Karen. Mm. The rest of the movie goes by relatively smoothly, with only a few whimpers from Damien. Maybe he would have liked the romantic comedy better. We get to the final scene of the movie where Romulus, Bad Blood, and the general's wife embrace each other in his crypt. It appears that the true vampire crusade was the vampire crusade in our hearts, our cold, unbeating hearts. Romulus and the general's wife begin making out. Hard. Ugh. The film fades to black and the end appears on the screen. But then it hard cuts to Demetrius and his rival lover, Carmela, 
who won, who, oh, who watched the two from afar. Oh no, twist ending. Our bloodline has been pure for thousands of years. Romulus has betrayed us by loving a human woman. It will only be a short time before the next vampire crusade three evil must die again. More thunder, more ominous organs. The movie fades out again and a bloody question mark now accompanies the end. I want to see this movie. I want to see this movie. This sounds good. Damien and I walk out of the movie theater amidst throngs of chattering moviegoers. He's a little more pale than I remember, but otherwise he survived the encounter. He even seems kind of invigorated. Ugh. What an interesting film. While the premise admittedly struck me as pedestrian, I was intrigued by its harrowing love story and great attention to detail in regards to vampire lore. It's nice to blood you. So, so dumb. It's so dumb. But I want to see it. I think this would be a good movie. Yeah, it was pretty good. A lot more vampire titties than I thought there would be. Ah. You know, you know what's similarly actually a really good movie? Um shoot. Nicholas Cage, Nicholas Holt. The fuck was it called? Renfield. Renfield was very good. Okay. If you thought it looked dumb, you're wrong. It was really good. That's what I was trying to think of. <laughs> Come, the night is young. Let's take a stroll. Ah. Damien is making a point of not telling me where he's taking me. Still, I'm enjoying the walk in the cool night air. Being alone here with Damien's a lot better than being in a crowded theater. Lovely night, isn't it? As lovely as the company, yes. He thinks I'm lovely. Damn. Okay. Here comes the smooth response. Okay, um, thanks. Mm. No problem. Mm. Crushed it. We both stand there feeling a little awkward. I sure am one smooth operator. Are you getting a little hungry? We could maybe stop off and grab something oh. to eat. Worry not, friend, I have a plan. We turn the corner and are greeted by the gates of a cemetery? What? Are we going in there? Oh. A little bit of Victorian flavor, Karen, trust me. Mm. I'm a bit nervous, but Damien hasn't led me wrong yet. I follow his lead as we walk into the cemetery. Statues of angels stare down at us as we follow a path through the faded tombstones. As we crest a small hill, we get a beautiful view of the city. The night lights sparkle around us. I gotta hand it to him. For being in a cemetery, this is strangely romantic. Huh. Picnicking in graveyards is an old Victorian tradition. An appropriate finish to an evening after a vampire movie, wouldn't you say? With a flourish, Damien produces a blanket and picnic basket. Wait, where were you hiding that? Under my cloak? Oh, right. <laughs> Damien unfolds the blanket and we both sit down, gazing out at the city lights. He produces a bottle of red wine and fine selection of cheeses. In the Victorian era, there were no public art galleries, parks, or botanical gardens to speak of. Once rural graveyards became a more popular alternative to church burials, they became the only place that people could see beautiful plant life and fine sculptures. That makes sense. It's pretty nice. I have a question, though. How are you okay with being in a graveyard, but you had trouble handling a scary <sighs> movie? I wasn't. He sighs deeply. Okay, yes, I was extremely scared by the movie. I was not writing a book about blood magic in my head. I just... I've never been good at those. I just feel as if because of how I look and act, people expect me to love horror films, but so I must play the part. And truth be told, I don't know if I have the constitution for them at times. Damien, I'm so sorry. If I'd have known, I would have suggested another oh. movie. It's quite all right. I actually did find myself enjoying this one, thanks to your help. Oh. Graveyards, however, I think there's something rather beautiful about death. Cemeteries are traditionally built away from cities, away from the realm of the living, and it helps us keeps us rather separated from it. To acknowledge death and become comfortable with it, I think, gives us a certain intimate knowledge of ourselves. To sit amongst generations of those who've come before us, to be truly alive in the midst of so much death, brings me great comfort. Death helps me appreciate life, to savor every second. We sit and enjoy our food and wine. I don't feel scared anymore. Never thought I'd be comfortable sitting alone in a graveyard at night, but I actually feel very peaceful. Suddenly, it doesn't seem like we're alone. Off in the distance, I see a shadowy figure in the trees. What Ugh. is that? I'm not sure. Mm. It noticed us. I'm paralyzed with fear as it begins lumbering slowly towards us, its shape taking a more animal form, more feral. I look at Damien for help, but he's just as afraid and, tra and transfixed as I am. I want to scream, but it's stuck in my throat. The creature's getting closer, moving faster. Ugh. Woof! 
Huh. Oh. Huh. It's a dog. <laughs> As it finally comes into the light, the friendliest, dumbest little Boston Terrier I've ever seen pulls its owner towards us. Oh. The dog trots over to Damien and sniffs his hand. Damien looks ecstatic. He ruffles the dog's fur happily. What a beautiful dog. Hey. We both look up, not expecting to see... Thanks. It's Robert. Oh. Robert, what are you doing here on this lovely evening? Hmm. Hunting cryptoids. Huh. What? Oh. What? <laughs> I didn't know you had a dog. I... This isn't my dog. Mm -hmm. I found her wandering in the street. I put a leash on her. And now we're walking around this graveyard together. Mm. Hunting cryptids. Oh. Damien and I share a look. Oh. May I give her a treat? Mm. Sure. Wouldn't give her cheese, though. Oh. Not to worry. Damien reaches into the depths of his coat and produces a small dog treat. What else is he keeping in there? The dog laps up the treat and crunches away, tail wagging furiously. Damien continues to smooth down her fur. Oh my god, we should all carry dog treats around in our pockets. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Oh. My absolute pleasure. Damien shakes the dog's paw. Robert is my second fave. So today we were deciding between Damien and Robert to do for this, this run, you know? We chose Damien, but I almost considered Robert. Oh. Lovely to meet you, my friend. Mayor Pads cross again. Robert and his dog disappear into the darkness again. Damien stares after them. I didn't know you liked dogs. Uh -huh. Victorians love dogs, actually. Most Victorian women of high fashion would always be accompanied by a small dog, such as a terrier or a Maltese. Uh -huh. I, uh, think big dogs are nice, too. Yeah, man, dogs are cool. Uh -huh. I do believe we've had enough excitement for one night. What say we make our way home? Damien hops to his feet and extends a hand to help me up. I gladly take it as my knees aren't what they used to be. He packs up his picnic basket and leads us out to the graveyard. Out of the graveyard. As we begin the walk home, I take one last look at the cemetery. It really is beautiful. Uh -huh. Like a proper gentleman, Damien walks me to my doorstep. Oh. Thank you ever so kindly for your company tonight. Damien, it was my pleasure. Karen, if you'll allow me, it would bring me great joy to offer you a token of my affection. Damien reaches into his cloak and pulls out a folded monogram handkerchief. He presses, presses it into my hand. Wow, thank you, Damien. Um, okay. This is what we're supposed to pick. I can't wait to sneeze on this. Oh my god. I'm gonna wave it at passing ships. I'll use this to dry my tears for those I've lost. A noble purpose. Wow, that gave him eggplants. Okay. Damien shuffles his feet. Hmm. I just want to say that it's rare to find someone like you, someone who's open to my eccentricities. Oh. It's nice to feel so accepted. Um, Thank you. Damien gives my hand a quick squeeze. Damien blushes and hastily retracts his hand. Uh, I must take my leave. Good night. Before I can say anything else, he's gone. Huh. I unlock the door and step inside. Like a whirlwind, Amanda runs from the window and plops down on the couch, trying to look nonchalant. Hey, Dad, what's up? Were you watching me from the window? No. no I was just, uh... Hmm. Okay, yeah. How was the movie? Lots of vampire titties. <laughs> Told you. But as it turns out, Damien is... Hmm. Wait, Amanda doesn't need to know that. I'll keep that between me and Damien. This is scary cool. Yep, he's so cool it's scary. Nice save, Karen. What the why can't Amanda know? I don't understand. Is it a secret? Did you know that graveyards used to be placed at a place to throw parties? I think I'm misremembering hmm. that. Wow, that's pretty punk. Also, we saw a dog. Definitely thought it was a werewolf for a minute, though. How can you be so sure it wasn't a werewolf? How can you be so sure I'm not a werewolf? And how can I be so sure you're not a werewolf? Hmm. Amanda's eyes narrow. Huh. I don't trust you. Nor I you. Hmm. We make intense, wary eye contact for a second. Anyway, I'm calling it for the night. Don't stay up too late, will ya? I'll try not to howl at the moon past midnight. Date complete. Cargo short? What? Oh, oh my god. Ojo-sama? Oh, oh, my dear friend, you've simply taken the egg on this one. Um, t taken the egg is a... Uh... It's a, it's a, it's a Victorian phrase. It technically means winning. So, uh, you've ultimately you've you've won. I think you've got that opposite. The egg would be zero. You lost, right? I don't. I don't. I don't think you. I don't think you know that saying, Damien. I'm sorry. 
Okay. Okay, this, we've seen this. And Amanda's <laughs> crying. Um, but we're going to leave her alone this time. We're going to see what the bad ending is for her. Uh, Ugh. Welcome. Okay. You got dads. <laughs> oh, wait, what's this? Hey, Karen, listen, this is you from the past. Whoa, how'd this happen? I figured you're trying to reply to this because I know myself, but this is an automated message from you earlier this morning when it was socially unacceptable to go out and buy ice cream. I forgot I did that. I forgot how I did that as well. The future's amazing. Listen, life is short and ice cream should always be acceptable, but unfortunately, this isn't the society we live in. And it's less the society we live in and more me projecting my own anxiety about being judged unto others. But you know what I mean. By the time you're reading this, it's a certain time of day in which nobody will bat an eye at you for going out and buying ice cream. You know what to do. Be good. Me. Third day. Yes, okay. Apparently we have to buy ice cream, though. Let's go buy that ice cream. And then we'll do the third date. You know what? I've earned a treat. On the way home, I decide to stop off and grab some ice cream, which I fully plan to eat directly from the tub. I spend a lot of time trying to figure out just what type of ice cream I'd like to eat directly from the tub. Rocky Road, pistachio. Oh, Amanda's probably going to want some too. Better get two tubs. She loves cookie dough ice cream though, right? Hey, mister. I turn around to see Ernest leaning up against the wall of the convenience store. Ernest? You're cool, right? Uh, I'm cool. But I don't see what that has to do with anything. Well, if you're cool, you'll help me out, right? Help you out? There's no fire involved, is there? Just clouds. So if I give you $20, will you buy me e-liquid? Ernest, what's e-liquid? It's like uh, Gatorade, you know, electrolyte liquid. I'll get it myself, but I'm banned from here for trying to run a grift on the cashier. A classic fiddle game, you know the deal. Oh, you're talking about balanced electrolytes? Then I've got you, little buddy. And I didn't know you played the fiddle. Just ask the clerk for blue Cranzapple Vortex. He'll know what it is. Did he really get tricked? Did, 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 did the dad really get tricked? I picked up a tub of pistachio ice cream for myself and a tub of cookie dough for Amanda. I search around for some blue crazen void starer, but I can't seem to find any. I turn to the cashier. Say, what's your finest e-liquid? Behind the counter, you got an ID? First of all, my daughter is older than you. Second of all, I'm flattered. I switched shampoo recently. Is it taking some years off? Look, you need to be 21 to buy vape juice. Your hair doesn't look a day over 20. Wait a minute. Are you just trying to butter me up to get me to buy more ice cream because it's working? I glance outside and spot Ernest staring at me. Double wait a minute. So you're telling me that e-liquid is not a sports drink? It's for vaping. Ernest is watching us intently through the window. I better go give that kid a piece of my mind. I see. Why was there no picture for that scene? It was like just black screen the whole time. Okay, look, I'm going to pretend that you didn't try to trick me into buying you old Baphomet's cough syrup and then go inside here and to purchase my ice cream. I won't tell your dad if you promise to scram. And stop vaping. You'll get popcorn lung. <gasps> oh my God. What if I give you $25? Go home, Ernest. And I'm walking back inside. Ernest calls after me. And you can get popcorn lung from microwave popcorn, you know. No, that's not... Neither of those is how popcorn lung works, but okay. I no longer trust this child, but the mere notion strikes fear into my heart. I go back inside to complete my purchase with the good cashier. Thank you, kind sir, for your time and generous hair compliments. You got it, bub. I glance out the window to see Ernest still outside. Looks like he's talking to some other poor sap. Guess I should go outside and save this other guy some grief. Wait a second. That's definitely a cop. Oh boy. I grab my tubs of ice cream and bolt outside. Ernest is already face down on the hood of a squad car. Ernest, did you seriously just try to get a cop to buy you e-liquid? Do you know this kid? Oh god, um, yeah, I'm friends with his dad. Uh, yeah, we live in the same cul-de-sac. I know his dad. Listen, he's a good kid, and I'm this boy's father. I turn around to see Robert walking up the street and towards the convenience store. Hmm. Ernest, what are you doing? I want a lawyer. Hmm. First of all, good first instinct. Remember that you're not required to answer. Oh my gosh, wait. I thought Hugo was his dad. Hugo's just his teacher. Okay, Robert's his dad. And this is the kid that like did the crazy sign at the the youth dance during Joseph's. Okay. I was very I was confused. I was wrong. This is, it's Robert's kid. Okay. 
Hugo is his dad? Okay, Robert's not his dad. Robert's just lying. Okay. First of all, good instinct. Remember that you're not required to answer any questions from a police officer without a lawyer present. You're this boy's father? I... Yes, sir. Ernest likes to lash out at me like this ever since the accident. Oh, um, I don't like talking about it. That's fine. Mm. Robert gets a wistful twinkle in uh. his eye. It all started seven summers ago. My hair was long then. New metal was still in style. Ernest and I were down in Florida swampland scavenging for a sir. I can leave you to take it from here. I don't know. Sounds good. Thanks, mm. officer. Ernest, come along now. You'll be cleaning grout from the rain gutter for a week, thanks to this transgression. The police officer gets in the car and drives off. I'm stunned by how cool Robert was just there. Thanks. I want to say Richard. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so Robert was just lying to help the kid out. Uh. Ouch. Don't mention it, Hemingway. Got in trouble plenty of times in my life. Just trying to do my good deed for the day. Will you buy me e-liquid if I give you $20? Child, I will end you. <laughs> hey, Karen, will you walk Ernest home with me? Sure. Oh. Ernest runs ahead, presumably so he won't be seen with us, which is the thing I think kids do. He reminds me a lot of myself when I was his mm -hmm. age. Well, maybe I wasn't as dumb. Seems like he tortures his dad. Hey. Seems like he tortures just about everybody. What? No, he did... I pat my back pocket. I pat the rest of my pockets. He stole my wallet. What do you, why are you doing this to yourself? I, what? Robert points at my tubs of ice cream. One of them's for Amanda. Oh. I have no qualms about the quality, quantity of ice cream you've purchased. It's a perfectly respectable amount of ice cream. It's the quality mm. I'm talking about. You work hard, Karen. You're a good dad. Do you think you deserve, don't you think you deserve top shelf ice cream? But these were on sale. Huh. If you're going to treat yourself, go big or go home. Real vanilla bean, real pistachio, you deserve it. I... We arrive at the cul-de-sac and Ernest runs into his home. Mm -hmm. That boy is the reason why we don't have prizes in cereal anymore. Uh... Catch you around, Karen. Robert tosses me my wallet. I catch it with a surprised mm -hmm. look on my face. I stole it back. Mm. Keep it in your front pocket or use a chain like back in your ska days. Smell you later. Wow, so Robert's a ska guy? See you, Robert. I go back inside my home, ready to spend the rest of the night with my two tubs of ice cream and also Amanda. Welcome. You've got dads. Okay, here we go. Damien. All right, we're going to message him. Third date, third date. Okay. Yeah, we're going to save and continue. I don't know why it doesn't just auto save there. Like, why is that a prompt and the other saves are auto saves? Ever since we had that picnic in the graveyard, Damien and I have been spending a lot of time together. We go on nighttime strolls pretty regularly. He was so impressed with the first letter I wrote him that he insisted we only communicate by post instead of through dad book. I initially protested, but he gave me one of those old signet rings to use as a seal for my letters, and I just couldn't say no. Hanging out with a goth dad again? Please, Amanda, you know his name. And yes, be honest with me here, pops. Is he actually a vampire? I remember you inviting him into our household that one time, and I've seen the Lost Boys, and I honestly would have preferred trying to see if he could have walked through the threshold of our home under his own power. Because you can get everyone through date two and then go back and save and do date three with all of them. Oh. Oh, okay. So you can literally do everyone's everyone's first date, everyone's second date, save, and then do each of their third date. That's probably how you're intended to play instead of just doing each of the routes. I did not understand that. Okay. Okay, I got it now. Yes, Amanda. I've become Damien's familiar. I am compelled under his curse. I'm sorry, sweetie. Ugh. Turn into a bat. I don't think... Ugh. What's the point of being a vampire if you can't turn into a bat? Well, okay. I'm off. Uh. Are you taking the car or are you flying off into the night on a leathery wing of a bat? One of those. While I'm out, can you throw away the garlic bread that's in the freezer so I don't die? That would be great. I'm keeping it there as insurance. You understand, right? That's my girl. Damien and I walk along the water's edge, chatting. Damien's cape, I mean cloak, he hates it when people call it a cape, 
Damien's cloak flutters behind him in the breeze. This is going to seem like a silly question, but why do goths wear black? Gothic subculture has always been associated with death, so it would make sense that the style surrounding it would be greatly influenced by mourning. Interestingly enough, though, that was in the Victorian era. Queen Victoria herself mourned the death of her late husband for ten whole years, wearing black for the rest of her life. If that's not goth, I don't know what is. I have another question. Go ahead. How are you so comfortable with death? You mentioned in the graveyard that it helps you appreciate your life or something? No. Ah, I've experienced several losses over the course of my life, and I truly believe the only manageable way to cope with it is to accept that death is simply a part of living. Mm. It's the single universal truth for every human who's ever lived. I'm going to die, you're going to die, and life carries on without us. Doesn't that make you feel scared? Not at all. Without the advances of modern science, death was everywhere in the Victorian era, and yet funerals were major social functions. Uh Victorians were obsessed with with the mementos of their loved ones, even going so far as to take elaborately staged photographs of their dead relatives. Uh The minutia of mourning was so complex that there were set periods of grieving that were deemed acceptable based on who in your life had passed. Now, we don't have any of that. If you lose someone, you end up feeling lost yourself because we have no modern equivalent of those formalities. We need to allow ourselves time to grieve, to feel that loss fully, but not allow it to consume us. So no... I'm not afraid of death. I believe it's a waste to spend your life dreading the end of it. Uh. That time we have here is brief and fleeting and occasionally cruel, but it is at all times precious. To stare death in the face and live despite that, I think is a noble existence. Let's save the morning for the dead. Wow, that's beautiful. I can see the moonlight in the bay glint off of Damien's eyes. He smiles. We turn to the harbor and watch ships pass, breathing in the salty sea air. I look to Damien again and can't help but be entranced by his charm, his mystery. I find everything about him so fascinating. I lean in closer to Damien, closing my eyes as I do so. I'm so sorry. I have to take this. Damien steps away from me to answer his phone. Oh no, I hope it isn't Lucian again. After speaking in hushed tones for a few moments, Damien returns to me. Everything okay? What? There's an emergency. Lucian? No, thankfully, but I must take my leave. Oh. Okay, is there anything I can do to help? Mmm, huh. dads do have to stick together, right? You know it. Uh. Then come. There isn't time to waste. After a short drive in silence, we arrive at the rundown building on the outskirts of town. Where are we? It's better if I just show you. I push the surprisingly heavy door open and find myself in a dimly lit waiting room. After a few rickety chairs line the walls, there doesn't seem to be anyone behind the front desk. There are a few paintings and pictures on the wall, but they're so nondescript, I'm still unsure of what kind of place this even is. Wait here for a moment. I'll be right back. Damien walks off down the corridor, his boot heels echoing through the halls of the seemingly empty building. Distant howls echo from some place I can't see, and there's a faint scratching sound like claws on tile. I cautiously peek down the hall to find stall after stall of scared-looking dogs. A few of them notice me and skitter up the chain-link fence, sticking their noses through it to sniff the air. What have I gotten myself into? Suddenly the light shut off. I panic, unsure of where I am or how I can get out. I stumble through the darkness, my breathing getting heavier and heavier. Damien? The lights finally turn back on. Oh my god, it's her again. Hey, sailor. Mary? What are you doing here? You aren't here for the fight club. I, uh, I don't want to get punched in the face. Ah. Great, because this is an animal shelter. A what? Hmm. We take care of stray animals and then people adopt the stray animals. Didn't you see the pets when you walked in? Oh, I just, sorry. I didn't really expect to see you volunteering at an animal shelter. Yeah, I wouldn't expect that either, to be honest. Wow. Okay, kid, put me in a box. Dames, you hear this baloney. Just one moment. Thunder cracks and a door bursts open. Appearing from the shadows, I see Damien? Um, hey. It's Damien. He looks completely different. No cloak, no Victorian era clothing, no makeup. I wasn't planning to share this side of me until much later, but I'm not as goth as you think. Mm. I, uh, I'm a systems administrator for the IT department of a realty company. I knew it. I knew this. There are goths in IT though. This isn't this isn't um this isn't surprising. 
I wear tennis shoes to work, and I listen to Bruce Springsteen, I enjoy going to the hardware store and looking at storage solutions, and I volunteer at this animal shelter in my spare time. I'm boring. I'm fascinated with Victorian history and the goth lifestyle that is much as true, it's just not all that I am. I need you to know that. Oh, I, uh... Hmm. Hate to kill the moment here, but there's some pressing business that needs attending to. I love him. I love him too, Shadow. I love him. Oh, oh right. It's Duchess Cordelia. Again. <coughs> Who's Duchess Cordelia? She's one of the pups. Gets out all the time. She somehow learned how to open the doors and now she's unstoppable. Uh. When did she get out? This morning, I went to go sing sea shanties to the cats when I came back. She had already bolted. I have to stay here with the pets, so I need you two to go find her. Of course. Where could she be? She always ends up running off to the same place. Here, let me draw you a map. Mary starts scribbling on the back of the pet adoption mm. form. She's very smart, ruthless even. You need to stay on your toes and get her back by sundown or else she turns into a werewolf and starts eating people. What? <laughs> You're a perfect little peach, Karen. Ah. We just don't want her to be stuck outside when it's cold. Okay. Mary's much better when you do Damien's route. When you do uh, Joseph's route, Mary is a bitch. Oh. I'll grab some treats and we can hit the road. Damien and I look over the map Mary created for us. Oh, man. I'm Nerd's house. Wait. Mario Batali? <laughs> Kale, Coffee Dad, Nerd's House, Mary's Sick Pad, Smalls, Dames, oh my god, Other Nerd's House. Wow. At least you're not Other Nerd's House. Looks like you're moving up in the pecking order. Congrats, kiddo. Where should we head first? Um, okay, we're gonna go to the cul-de-sac. Damien and I exit the parking lot and start driving towards town. I look over to him. He seems concerned. Shouldn't be too hard to find the Duchess, right? She's a pretty big pup. Mary wasn't kidding when she said that that dog was smart. One time she correctly guessed the winner of the Kentucky Derby. It was a really great year for Bark Bark Bark. <laughs> Damien. <sighs> hmm, I don't know. What do you think our odds are, Karen? Okay, um, I think abandon all hope ye who enter here. But lo, look upon God's creation and wretch with horror at what he hath forsaken. Hell is empty and the devils are all here. Wow, he loved that. Okay. Nice. I thought that would cheer you up. Let's just hope for the best. We've got this. We drive through the cul-de-sac and everything seems to be pretty normal. It looks like Brian's doing some yard work. We pull into Brian's driveway and hop out. Hey, don't step on the grass. I just mowed. Have you seen any unusual activity in the area today? Aside from your underwatered lawn? Oh, here we go. How dare you? Ta I take my lawn care very seriously. Karen, please. You haven't seen a dog run through here, have you? Well, a little while ago, I heard Maxwell barking at something. When I came outside, my garden had been torn to shreds. It's going to take forever to retill the soil. Hmm, that could be a dog. Or a rather feisty raccoon. Whatever it was, it must have been pretty hungry. Ate all my tomatoes. I'm very sorry to hear about your garden. If you need assistance restoring it to its former glory, please don't hesitate to contact me. <laughs> Will do, buddy. Good luck finding that dog. Hmm, she's probably still hungry. I wonder if she's looking for more food elsewhere. Okay, so now we're gonna go uh, to the coffee spoon. We park in front of Matt's coffee shop and walk inside. It seems like a slow day. Matt sits behind the counter reading a book. Hey Matt, didn't expect to see you two today. What's up? Have you seen any stray dogs around? Actually, yeah. I caught one digging through the trash earlier. It ran away when I tried to get closer though. Did you see what direction it ran in? Matt thinks for a second. Might have been running east, I think. That pup tore through three pans of old grateful banana bread. Want to take some for the road just in case? Sure thing. Matt packages up a slice. Thanks for the slice. The road slice. This banana bread is going to be so good. I think he meant to give it to you for the dog. Right, I meant it's going to be so good for the dog to eat. Yeah. I feel like we're on the right track. You think? If we keep this up, we'll find the Duchess in no time. Hey, if you like dogs so much, why don't you have any? Lucian is severely allergic. I wouldn't put him through that. 
but there's still dogs in my life, so for that I'm grateful. There's about to be one more dog in your life, buddy. Splinted attitude. Let's not waste any more time. Verily. Okay, so now we're gonna go to... I guess we're just supposed to go down this list. Okay, softball field. We drive to the softball field. Looks like Craig's team is practicing. I wonder if any of these kids saw something. Craig spots us and jogs over. Softball bat slung over mm. his shoulder. Hey, bros, what's up? Craig, you wouldn't have happened to... Oh, I didn't mean to hit that. You wouldn't have happened to see a dog around here, have you? One escaped from the animal shelter and we're trying to locate oh. her. Hmm, I don't think so. Maybe one of the girls mm. saw something. Girls! Hey, Amanda's dad. Hi, Lucian's dad. We have names. Girls, have you seen any dogs around? There was a big dog here earlier. She ran off a while ago, though. I don't think she had an owner, but it really wanted to play. We tried to play fetch with her, but she just took the softball and ran. I think she ate it, actually. She was a lot of dog. Here, take another softball. Might come in handy later. Oh. Many thanks, Craig. Okay, so now we're going to go to Bayside. We arrive back at Bayside. Just like old times, eh? I remember it as if it was yesterday. I mean, earlier today. <laughs> so what do you think? Any signs of the pooch? None yet. Although who knows if she made it to any of these ships. Duchess would do that? I wouldn't put it past her to know how to navigate in rough seas and without a compass. Very smart. Pops? Damien and I turned to see my daughter. Amanda, what are you doing here? Hmm. Did you think I just stayed inside all day vegging out on the couch and watching TV? Oh, sorry. What are you doing? I'm heading home to go veg out on the couch and watch hmm. TV. Had to get a burrito first. Oh. Young miss, have you seen a dog around here? Ow. Oh, you bet. I saw a Pomeranian with a bow around its neck. I saw a big old Doberman named Henry. There was a stroller full of Yorkies, a Greyhound, a Golden Retriever. Did you see a Mastiff anywhere? Mmm, hmm, no dice. I would definitely have remembered that. Huh. I gotta run, though. This read is about ten minutes before the cheese breaks down into a molecular structure of the tortilla and makes it all soggy. You understand. I want a Pomeranian? Why? <laughs> Shadow, a Pomeranian would be smaller than your cats. And they bark so much. I, I'm so I don't understand yippy yappy dogs like Pomeranians and and uh, and Chihuahuas and stuff. They're so loud. They're so noisy. They're so jumpy. Why not? I mean, I guess if you have lots of extra energy to spend on it. <laughs> but I can't. I can't. They're like so. They're so hyper. They're so hyper. <laughs> I guess if you love them, I don't know. I think your cats would beat it up. I do? <laughs> of course. Have a lovely evening, Miss Terry. Matt said the Duchess went east from the coffee spoon, but there's no sign of her here. I suppose we need to go. Not so east? Okay. I fear that the hours are growing short. We must make haste if we're to find the Duchess by sundown. Damien looks more stressed by the minute. I gotta think of something to lighten the mood. Okay. I did the Mastiff thing. I want something smaller. Okay. So you tried one extreme end, so you need to try the other extreme end. Is that how it is? Gonna get the full spectrum of dog by doing the two bell ends of the spectrum? Okay. How many goths does it take to screw in a light bulb? I don't know. How many? One. Goths are very capable, especially when looking for a dog. Whoa! He loved that. Okay. Damien smiles to himself. Exactly. Okay. I understand you. you. You'll have to convince Jacob. What does he think about Pomeranians? What does he think about like little, little dogs? I keep reading Damien's directions from the map as we drive around town. Okay. So we already did all of these except aquarium. Damien and I stop by the aquarium. Everything looks in order here, but it might help to get out of the car and take a look. You seen anything? Oh, no. Hmm. No dog here. Not even any sign of her. Mm. Did you know the penguins are considered the goths of the sea? Damien, I want to believe you so badly. <laughs> oh, that was it? Okay. Um, so let's go now to the cul-de-sac. He doesn't like animals? I know. <laughs> so good luck on that one. Maybe, you, maybe since it's so small, you could sneak it into the house and it could be there for a few days before he notices. And then it's like too late. Maybe that's the strategy. We arrive at the cul-de-sac to find everything looking normal, except, uh-oh, Hugo's front door is wide open. She can open doors. This is a cl classic Duchess Cordelia, a telltale sign. We should approach with caution. Whatever goes down in there, I've got your back. We creep up to the porch and step inside. 
There, sitting in the center of Hugo's living room like she owns the damn place, is one of the biggest dogs I've ever seen. Oof. Well, she hasn't broken anything in here yet. Wonderful. Now all we have to do is give the leash on her before she tries to escape again and get out of here before Hugo comes home. Easy peasy. Duchess, come here. The Duchess eyes Damien warily. As he approaches, she begins to growl. She's on her guard. We'll need another plan. Okay. Um, we're supposed to give her the banana bread. Okay. There we go. I reach into my pocket and pull out the slice of grateful banana bread Matt gave me. Duchess sniffs the air and hones in on the bread. Come here, girl. Nice and easy. I've got some yummy homemade vegan and possibly gluten-free banana bread. That's what you're into. The Duchess cautiously approaches me and gives the bread a good sniff before gently taking it from my hand and dropping it on the ground like dogs always do for some reason. She curls up and starts munching on the bread. Why do why do animals do that? They like take it from you, but instead of eating it, they just bloop and then they eat it off the ground. Like why? It's it's weird. I don't know. Success! Damien walks up behind Duchess and attaches the leash to her collar. She immediately notices and starts whining. It's time to go home now, Duchess. Damien gives a tug on the leash. She won't move. The Duchess, what happened to our rapport? You and I used to be bosom buddies. She still doesn't move. She's huge. There's no way we can even try to lift her. Well, this is a weird situation to be in. I think we're literally trespassing in our friend's house with a large dog. What are you nerds doing? Oh no! Ernest stands in the doorway with a plate of pizza rolls. Ah! We're caught! Okay, um... What flavor pizza rolls are those? Uh, pepperoni blast? Nice. The Duchess notices Ernest and starts pulling against the leash. Why is this dog in my house? It's a long... The Duchess suddenly breaks free from Damien's grip and hurdles towards Ernest. <gasps> ah! Ernest and Duchess fall to the ground. Pizza rolls fly everywhere. This is bad. Ernest, are you okay? Ernest feeds Duchess a pizza roll. Hey, she likes pizza rolls. Ernest sits up, but the dog keeps licking his face. Oh, hey. Hugo stands at the door, looking like he's at a loss Whoa. for words. What's... Why are you guys... Whose dog is this? It's a long story, but involves a large dog who knows how to open doors. Poof. <laughs> Hugo, may I present to you Duchess Cordelia? <sighs> how do you do? Poof. We're friends. The Duchess licks Ernest's face. Oh my God, please let Hugo keep the keep Duchess. Please. She's from the local animal shelter. She got out and we've been chasing her all around town. Your house was her final stop. Dad, can we, can we keep uh, her? Ernest, I don't know if we're set up to take care of a- Sweet Wait, Chago. did you just call me dad? Come on, please. Look at how cute she is. Hugo sighs. Oh. We've been talking about adopting a dog for a while, but you have to promise me you'll take care of her. Yeah, I'll give her all the pizza rolls her little heart desires. I suddenly remember what's on the back of the map and pull a pin out of my pocket. <gasps> Got the forms ready for you if you're interested. Oh. I'll even waive the adoption fee since, you know, we technically broke into your household. Oh. Well, all right, it's a deal. Hugo steps onto the porch with us and signs the form while Ernest plays with Duchess inside. He sure seems happy with his new friend. Oh. I know, he called me dad, can you believe it? Damon places a hand on Hugo's shoulder. Mm. I certainly can. I think this will be really good for Ernest. It should teach him some responsibility. You should probably look into getting better locks on your doors though. The Duchess is a wily one, but do right by her and she'll love you two forever. Thank you. And long story short, the Duchess now lives in a happy home and neither of us were charged for breaking and entering. So all in all, I think it was a fine day's work. Nice work, you two. Mm. Karen, you could be as a valuable asset to our team of volunteers, you know. If you ever feel like petting some puppies, hit me up. Mary, I always feel like petting ah. puppies. Good to know. Well, I'll catch you later, fellas. Mary starts to leave. And one last thing. Ah. Damien's been telling me about you. Glad he finally brought you around. Oh, yeah. Ugh. Damien's my special boy. I love him. We go way back, and I got a vested interest in his health, success, and well-being. If you ever hurt him. Ugh. Mary, mm. you can fill in the blanks. I gulp. Yes, ma'am. Mary leaves me alone with Damien. What the heck? What is their past? So, about the whole goth thing. I, uh completely understand if you aren't interested in me anymore. What? Am I missing something here? I'm not a cool goth prince. I'm boring. 
I own five pairs of tennis shoes. I wear dumb glasses. Don't you care? He looks so nervous. Damien, do you really think I only like you because of all the goth stuff? That's all cool, but the best thing about you is how passionate you are about the things you love. History, art, Victorian fashion, dogs, storage solutions, it doesn't matter what it is. You care, and that's awesome. And also, the glasses are very cute. You don't think I'm boring at all. If you're boring, then I don't know what that makes me. I spend too much time online shopping for flashlights. I get excited to mow my lawn on Saturdays. I get cranky about commercials being too loud. I've even been thinking about making my own peanut butter. And then maybe we can be boring together? It would never be boring if I was with you. Damien suddenly closes the gap between us and pulls me into a hug. He buries his face in my shoulder. His hair smells like lavender and rosemary. I was so scared you wouldn't like me. Quite the opposite. Damien pulls away for a second and looks me in the eye. Without the colored contacts, his eyes are so dark and soulful. <laughs> May I kiss you? What? Okay. Uh, does the bat have wings? No, thou art welcome. Verily. You may take up, take upon yourself the, you know what, just kiss me. <laughs> he smiles slightly and leans in, giving me a gentle kiss. Damien pulls away and gives me an intense look. Huh. Do you want to uh, help me take care of the puppies? Yes. <laughs> yes, we do. Damien and I arrive back at the cul-de-sac, our fingers intertwined like a proper gentleman. He walks me to my doorstep. <laughs> this was lovely. Thank you for understanding. Thank you for everything. And I'm happy I can be myself around you. I'm glad, but I have one request. <clears throat> What's that? Can we keep sending each other letters? Uh. But of course! Damien kisses me one last time before turning around and heading home. Aww. Amanda runs back to the couch from the window and tries to look as nonchalant as possible. Hello, Father. I was sitting here on the couch the entire time. Hi, Amanda. Uh. So, are you guys, like, starting a vampire coven together? Oh, plot twist. Mothman. Damien's actually Mothman. I didn't see it coming either. Mm. Genius. Well, whatever's happening, I'm really glad you two are happy. You deserve it, Dad. Aw, shucks. I'm gonna head to bed. Catch you in the morning? Sure thing. I make my way to my room and fall into my bed with a heart full, excited for the days to come. All right. S rank. Yes, we wow. got so many daddy points, y'all. My stars, this never in a million moons have I had a date such as exquisite as this one. Oh my gosh! Okay. Ah, we went on all the Damien dates. I think I have everything finally set up. Amanda should be here any minute now. I think that's her car in the driveway. Okay, gotta act natural. Be cool, Karen, be cool. Amanda walks through the door with a suspicious look on her face. Hey, Dad. Off to a good start. Hmm. Something fishy? Rats. Uh... <laughs> okay. Um... You asked too many questions. Who do you think you are, my daughter? For literally my entire life, yes. I'm kidding. You're right. I have a little Ugh. surprise for you. Yeah, I can tell. You're bad at lying. Okay, I don't think this is different. We're doing the cake. Ah. Yes. <laughs> ah. Yeah, it's the party. Oh my gosh, but Damien's not in his goth thing since we did his route. That's too funny. Oh my gosh. Okay. Yes. Graduation party. Mac and cheese. I walk over to Mary, who's having a lively conversation with Amanda. We have a really fluffy Samoyed right now. His name's Harold, loves belly rubs. He always tries to lick your face if you get huh. too close. Miss Christensen, thank you so much for telling me in great detail about every single dog currently at the animal shelter. Please tell me about the Afghan with three hey. legs again. Sure, Quadro, we call him. It's one of those ironic nicknames. You know, if you're really interested, I could probably steal one for you. Really? Nah, but I could get you to, in to meet them all. We could always use extra hands around the shelter. Ah. And if those extra hands also happen to steal a dog, I'm glad you two are able to bond over cute dogs. Really warms my heart. Dad, we're having a moment. Hey, hey sailor. Your kid's a good egg. Where's your goth prince? You two are usually attached at the hip these days. He's, uh, he's around. Stellar. 
Mary turns her attention to Amanda. It's not too hard to sneak into a, sneak a dog into college. Trust me, I did it plenty back in the day. At one point, I had three cats living in my dorm. I decide to leave them to it. All of a sudden, a huge dog leaps into my arms. It's Duchess! Hugo and Ernest run up to me. The Duchess gives my face a few broad licks and hops down. We are working on that. Got her in a disciplinary class. She's a wild spirit who runs where she may. I don't mind at all. <laughs> Looks like the three of you are getting along nicely. Hey. She's a valuable addition to the clan. If I hold up my homework in front of her, she'll eat it. Cool. Uh. We'll deal with that later. <laughs> Duchess Cordelia spots a squirrel and darts across the yard. Ernest follows her, laughing. He's actually been a lot more manageable today. I think taking care of the dog's good for him. Thanks for breaking into my house, I guess. Anytime. Karen, Brian, you made it. Ha, huh, I don't pass up good Mac. What do you think of the party? <laughs> it's not bad. It's just not bad? Uh. Yeah, it's not bad. Don't let him bait you. Yeah, don't let him bait you. Okay, thank you for the lovely compliment. Okay, this isn't any different than Brian before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, bro. Bro, uh. this is a real rager. Okay. Yeah. Nice. This isn't any different than the ending before for him. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, about eating the cake. I understand. Bro. Oh, there we go. Yep, <laughs> couldn't ask for a better, better cul-de-sac. Well, I'm glad. Hopefully we'll see you at more church events. We've got a big schedule planned for the rest of the year. Sure thing, Joseph. And maybe if you aren't doing anything later, we could hang out sometime. Sure, Joseph, that'd be great. Well, see you later. Hugo comes up to me with a plate of mac mm. and cheese. The perfect cheddar to mac ratio. Beautiful work, Karen. Okay, they, yeah, this isn't any different. Come on, Hugo. Yeah. And then he's not her teacher anymore, so she's like, whatever. Okay, and then Robert. Yeah. See you later. Here's Matt. Okay, thanks for inviting me to your party. Anytime, bud. I know we had a rocky start, but I'm glad you, glad to know you. I hope you know how much your dad cares about you. Um, yeah. My dad's had a rough couple of years, and I know that it must not have been easy to raise me alone. He's kind of a weird guy, but I love him a lot, and it seems like you make him happy. So, you're cool in my book. Thank you, Lucian. That means a lot to me. Sure. And let me know if you want me to give you a stick and poke sometime. No, Lucy, I don't need a stick and poke from you, Lucian. Thanks for coming by. <laughs> See you around, Karen. As the party starts to wind down, I take a seat on our back porch step. The sun is setting and everyone seems to have eaten their fill. Amanda wanders over and sits down next to me. Hey, thanks for the party. You really didn't have to. I ruffle her hair. Anything for my panda. Uh. Amanda looks down at her shoes and sighs. What's wrong? Amanda takes a deep mm -hmm. breath. I am scared, Dad. How am I going to make it through college if I can barely scrape by in high school? I don't know how to do adult stuff. My whole future is riding on this. Aren't you at least a little excited? It's your dream school. No. I'm too worried to be excited. I'm not ready for this. <laughs> and I'm worried that you aren't either. Hey, hey, kiddo, it's gonna be all right. No matter how far we are away from each other, you're always gonna be my daughter. We've been through a lot together. This is just the next challenge and I'll always be a phone call away. You're gonna get through this. We're gonna get through this. Yeah, I guess. This isn't, are you mad at me? No, I'm not mad, but it seems like she's trying to put this delicately. Oh. I just, feel like I didn't get a chance to be independent, you know? I love you, Dad, but I need space to be my own person, and I didn't really get to do that growing up. Oh, no. I'm glad we're so close, but you can't be my best friend all the time, and I can't be yours. Oh. Maybe me going away would be good for both of us. Set up some boundaries. I... I didn't... I don't know what to say. Don't get me wrong, I love you, but I do wish things had been different. I guess I have a lot to think about <gasps> now, huh? I guess... Amanda hops up. The friends invited me out for ice cream, so I'm gonna head out. She kisses me on the top of the head. See you later, Pops. Love ya. Wow, Amanda really dropped a bomb on me there. Oh my gosh! The Amanda bad ending achievement is called World's Okayest Dad. What the heck? Wow, Amanda really dropped a bomb on me there. It's hard to process this all. I thought I was being the best parent I could, but apparently there's still a lot to learn. I look up to see Damien smiling at me. I take a seat next to Damien as the last guests make their way out of the party. <laughs> Did you know that the Victorian era, they would call benches seedy boys? What? Really? Uh -huh. I'm kidding, Karen, but what if? <laughs> yeah, no, they wouldn't say that. It's good to see you in your civvies again. 
Thank you. I had a revelation the other day, Karen, and I think it was largely due to your continued influence upon me. There was a version of myself that might have been embarrassed to show my true form, my information technology form. Oh my god. <laughs> um, but what you said about me, about how my passion was that you're, was what you truly admired, that emboldened me to feel like myself regardless of how I choose to dress and act. Instead of separate entities, they're simply different facets of myself, a three-dimensional human being with his own thoughts, wants, and needs. I love dressing the way I do, but feeling constricted by what I thought was my own personal brand made me lose sight of why I did this in the first place. To make myself happy. I place my hand on Damien's and I feel a light squeeze. Looking up, I'm greeted by Damien's warm smile. <laughs> I'm trying to be more comfortable with who I am, rather than dwelling on who I could be to other people. I can't stop smiling. I'm so proud of him. Damien, I'm so happy you've realized that you can be a dog-loving goth. Me too, Karen, me too. I feel myself inching closer and closer to Damien. I go to brush a lock of hair out of his face and I'm shocked at how soft it is. How is your hair so soft? Dog shampoo. <laughs> Would it do that? Wait, Shadow, does dog shampoo do that? Is it, is it like how some people use horse shampoo? I don't know. I don't, I don't know about this. I keep running my hand through his hair, and he leans closer to me, placing a hand on the side of my face. He strokes my cheek with his thumb. Yes, really? Uh, okay. Oh. You know, public displays of affection were considered scandalous in the Victorian era. Damien pulls me in for a kiss. Uh. But I think I can make an exception for you. Oh, yeah. Okay, wait, was that the ending? Yes, it's credits time. Yes, okay. Dog shampoo really can make your hair super soft? I have no idea. Okay. This game is so good, you guys. We've done the two roots, and I, I enjoyed both of them. I enjoyed Damien's a bit more, though. Damien's was really good. This is a good snapshot. Okay, well that's our second run through. Oh my gosh. All right, so if you were, um, if you're watching the recorded version of this on YouTube, thank you so much for watching. Um, we're gonna go ahead and end the recording there. Um, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe down below. And of course, as always, you guys, don't forget to make it a great day.